everyone and welcome to the transatlantic theater podcast episode 17 i remember the episode name this time or number um oh, wow. i'm joined by two people this time you're the standard normal scheduled marcos rodriguez if you want to say hello i already nope. said your name sorry no no it's okay i don't have to introduce myself i'll have to say hi hello there you go <laughs> and we have a guest today if you want to introduce yourself guest person uh, hello uh i'm tony um, we mentioned a couple of times as the only viewer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess this episode's going to have zero views. Yeah, I did think of that. I was like, this this is a terrible idea, because who's going to listen to this? And then my girlfriend was like, oh, I'll listen to that one if Tony's on it. And I was like, oh, cool, we're going to do Streets of Fire. And she's like, never mind, I won't. I won't <laughs> she didn't like it. She doesn't like the movie, no, not really. This film's Why? an accidental I mean, masterpiece. It's a very interesting movie, I can say. <laughs> it's... I, I I love it for reasons that are really stupid. What are the reasons? And that I gotta hear it. The reasons that are just like the reasons that they're it's a bad movie. Like <laughs> like it is a bad it's a, this is a good bad movie for me. Yes. Like it hits all the marks that I want for it. Uh huh. Um, but with the strange caveat of like having a lot of famous people in it. <laughs> yeah, like Willem Dafoe. What the fuck? Yeah, really early Willem Dafoe, back in the day when he was typecast as Guy on Leather Motorcycle. Well, he was um, Dafoe, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, you like that. Okay, that was, that's the end of Marcus's review, thank you very much. <laughs> it's just going to be Tony and I for the rest of the, rest of the podcast. <laughs> I wonder with like, um, some of the more talented actors, like, uh, what do they think when they're on this film? I don't know, like, how many people like <laughs> go up to Diane Lane... And they're just like, hey, do you remember Streets of Fire? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Willem Dafoe is, in my opinion, he's a fantastic actor. And he's yeah. been in some weird shit, man. Like, he definitely shines the most in this. Him and Bill Paxton, I think, are the like the highlights of the film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, yeah, he was in that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Bill Paxton's yeah, hair. And then uh, the homeless dude is somebody famous as well. I can't remember his yes. name, but like he's definitely like... I was like, why the fuck is he here? And then expected him to be, you know, recurring because he was kind of famous. Well, and then famous he was now. there for five seconds. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And famous he was now. kind of famous in the 90s-ish. But, uh, okay. I don't know, what the fuck else is he in? I forget right now. The Let me look it up. Man. Let me see if I can Because I, I could see his face and his everything else about him in like a scene of a movie I've seen, but I have no idea what movie that was. Yeah. Tom Walton. Is that his name? That's his name? Yeah. He was what? in uh, Arrested Development. Oh, yeah. Which is very... Uh... No, I'm thinking of... The, the homeless guy I'm thinking of is Ed Begley Jr., um, who is in... a lot of things. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, he plays like... Just like you know, older dude who knows things. Like I feel like that's his role. Usually, especially considering half of his roles I'm looking at on IMDb, he plays a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he is on Arrested Development, Reese. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also plays. He was also in Lucky as a doctor, which was the last uh, movie with Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. Have you guys seen that one? Yeah. I have not. No. It's uh, it's okay. I wouldn't highly recommend it, but at the same, it's a weird movie because Dude, I would normally Tap. not recommend it. Huh? He was in Spinal Tap. Oh, that's that's why he's a he's a god amongst men. <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't if 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 it was a normal movie, I would never recommend Lucky. Uh, but because it's Harry Dean Stanton's last film, I'm like, ah, I guess you should watch it because it's a lo a lot of the movie is about just an old man dealing with like the fear of death being quite close to him um dude I so like it's, it's an, interesting i spoke to an old man the other day so i was at this facility i, I work in a hospital so I, I meet a lot of people close to their death um but i i was on this elevator right? i was over at the cardiac uh, imaging over here in uh in my area yeah and uh you know i was waiting for the elevator along with this old man and and we both get on and I'm waiting for him. I asked him, like, uh, what floor do you want? And he's like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I pressed the first floor because, you know, I mean, there's only <laughs> one way to go when you're on yeah. the top floor, and that's down. 
So, and then he starts telling me, he's like, yeah, I had a stroke a little while ago, so I'm just kind of waiting to die. And I was just like, God, Jesus. Are we all? Yeah, I was like, yeah. Aren't, aren't we all, you know? <laughs> but my Lord, it was just, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, ever since the stroke, everything's been weird. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, interesting man. character. Yeah, but not to I'm um, not to to just you know put light on what that man said, but I I say considering this is the quickest we've gotten straight into the movie, do we want to divert back to the movie? Because <laughs> so then we were gonna just go off on tangents about like death. <laughs> well, we're, we could stop with death right there. I just you mentioned yeah. uh, you mentioned that movie being about death. So yeah, there was an yeah, experience yeah. I had with no, that old fair. man. He was telling me he was basically waiting to die. <laughs> that's weird. It's crazy. Did you ever, did you ever find out what floor he was trying to go to? No, I just stopped at the first floor. I got off and I got in my car and left because I don't know. I'm like... So he's just in the fuck. He's still in the elevator, just like <laughs> no, no, he got down. off the elevator. He got off the elevator. Okay. The floor. I don't know if that's floor okay. he needed to get off on, but hmm. whatever. Listen, man, he'll figure it out. <laughs> he's, he's lived for a long enough time to figure shit out. That's. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, I hope so. Anyway. Well, yeah, he was pretty old. I mean, he looked maybe. 60s or 70s wow that's i mean that's pretty young for <coughs> reese you stroke, only say that man. because your parents are that age your parents are old yeah. reese <laughs> my parents aren't old they're pretty young well your mother i think so your mother's relatively no i well, mean you're just saying that in case she listens to this 50s, podcast no once you're in your 50s man you're, you're considered old i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> listen you're talking to somebody uh i don't i don't think you understand your audience here <laughs> yeah i'm well, not in my 50s not yet but, yeah. yeah, I know you're not. Yeah. I'm not saying you're in your fifties. Eight years, you know that's uh, something to look yeah. forward to. Yeah, once he hits his fifties, he's old, right? That's how it works. No, I, I mean, I think I'm around about middle age now. I think I'm being yeah, optimistic yeah, to suggest I'm sort of middle point in my life. You know? <laughs> yeah, that means he at least has another, that's fair. you know, forty or so years. That's great. Yeah, just, yeah. I get the seventy-five, and then that'll be it. Then, yeah. 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 So yeah that's that's how did you um I don't know like I my parents are the ones who like as Marcos has said my parents are the ones who give me kind of hope that that I'll be fine cuz like it's just, I think it's just about how you view your lifestyle like my parents are just they still just act like kids all the time they're fucking in their 70s like yeah, that's hilarious. it's just yeah um I think I think getting to West Wales and like living in a sleepy retirement village has maybe changed that a little bit just because obviously they shifted to toward the attitudes of where they're living but I think because they were in LA where like everyone just like it doesn't matter if you're 80 like you're still partying hard like you're still sick going at it like that's just the la life like i think that affected how long people f- feel young mm. Mm. is it uh, a consistently warm climate in la even yes. through the winter yes Very consistent. there you go uh wow. yeah we <laughs> we had um two it's like normally we have about two weeks of rain a year in la Right. Uh, like total? Yeah, like I think it was. There's like, let me take a look at what it That's was. Like a decent there was summer a for us. Number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we had more rain than that. Um, number of days with rain, LA 2020. Uh, so Los Angeles, California, rained 33 days into the year t- uh, uh, 2020. There you go. So at least a month. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I thought we had more rain than that, but uh, dude, so 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 just by looking at this movie and getting like the just sorry, mm-hmm. it's it's 19. Yeah. Well, I thought it was gonna be more 1980s. It turned out yeah. to be the combination of American Graffiti and fucking you know film from the 80s because it was like there were certain scenes if you just like watched it solely from that scene you would think the movie's mm-hmm. set in the 1950s yeah like, this movie is totally fucked yeah, it just doesn't really make is. yeah because i was just well, like what saying. the fuck this is america okay so this is america have yeah. you seen american graffiti you know what i'm talking about when i reference yeah i know yeah okay. american graffiti i get i get what you were saying with that yeah. yeah yeah so it's like that and then all of a sudden oh shit actually this is an 80s movie look at that one actress she's com- yeah. giant ass fucking shoulder pads and everything <laughs> yeah like Elaine is clearly like an '80s rock star. Yeah. Her fan is like an '80s rock star. Elaine, it's, um, but it's like, Ellen, isn't it? No, so it's Ellen Aim is. Her oh, name, Ellen sorry. Aim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, but like she's everything's like rock star eighties, but then like it wants to be nineteen fifties sometimes, but then it goes back to being nineteen eighties in like the fucking biker bar. Mm-hmm. Um and, and then, then like the country and even the city, and, like like the fucking it's like, Western man, the only character yeah. who's that. <laughs> Like, the movie just wants to be so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it, it wants to be about a small town, but it's a fucking big city set. Yeah. Like, um, which is confusing. And also, they had clearly one stretch of road, and that's it. Yeah, they had one stretch of road, <laughs> they had, like, a metro, and then they had, like, one other location, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> other than that, everything else takes place in the same exact spot. It's just it's just the fucking scene where he's, like, speeding down the road, and he's just doing fucking U-turns the whole time. Yeah, they're all doing... They're all making right turns. I, I don't think I ever saw a left turn ever be made. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably one time when they flipped it to, like, make it look like he turned left, but really, you could tell it was the same corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Like, mirrored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was... It's The movie just wants to be everything, and kind of... I think does a decent job of kind of falling in the in between, like not intentionally. I don't think it does it correctly. I think it just happens to accidentally fall in this like beautifully like messed, terrible, not really well put together. Like it's just it's it's a movie full of tropes that just happen to all work in a cohesive way. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cohesive. Like it was still a yeah. decent story. I thought it was going to be more of a musical, to be honest. I thought it was going to be too when I first you know heard about it and then watched it. And I was like, oh, it's. But not really like can that. i just say dude that first song that first song it's so was good fucking awesome yeah it's so good <laughs> very catchy so good yeah yeah heather hates it because i play that fucking soundtrack all the time <laughs> it's so good the first song but it's just yeah. the first song and then the last song those are the only two songs I'm yeah like. well the the first song and the last song surprise surprise were written by jim steinman and all the other ones are written by random people well <laughs> Who the fuck is Jim Steinman? What is what else? The is guy it? who wrote all the music for Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, you, you, dude, that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah. The energy and everything, how it feels, is yeah. so Meatloaf. Yeah, it's it's so Meatloaf. Yeah, wow. but it, yeah, the, if you look at the credits, it's like those two songs with Jim Steinman, then the rest are just like random bands. I think uh, Sorcerer, which is the one that at the when they're in the eighties nightclub, that's like um, Jet jo- Joan Jet or something like that. It's it's somebody some female. Uh, Rockstar from the 80s, but I don't remember who. Wait, I'm sorry. Where? The song that they play, like this kind of slow song they play when they're in the, the club. Oh, like, the slow song that yeah. she sings. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's by like an 80s rock girl person, but I just don't remember who. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, the other two songs are essentially quote-unquote meat love songs. That's awesome. <laughs> Does Diane Lane actually sing any of the songs? Or just uh, like apparently them? not. No. No, it's my man. Wow, yeah, uh, which cause... is why apparently he didn't want to give her the role because apparently she was supposed to be a little bit older because um, she was 18 when they filmed. Oh, um, dude, she looked older. <laughs> yeah, she did not look 18. <laughs> uh, she she was supposed to be older and she they wanted someone who could sing, but apparently she like really wanted. She, that's the weird part. She really wanted the part. <laughs> it sounded like fun, probably. You know. Yeah. It's like, have you ever watched Rock and Roll? Are you talking about what? Rock and Rock Rule. and Rule? Yeah, it's no. this really horrible animation from uh, the eighties, and it's like it's kind of like heavy metal, but way worse. <laughs> and it has almost the exact same premise. <laughs> this girl gets she's like a singer, and she's really good, and she gets kidnapped yeah. and shit. And except, I think the actress is actually the singer in Rock and Roll, but it's yeah. it's fucking nuts. The you thing get, I just I just I'm still struggling to understand the motive uh, why he kidnapped her. Because he wants her for like two weeks, you, you know, like he thinks. Yeah, no, he said he like the line. The yeah, yeah, it's just a yeah. bit of mild sex trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. Just two yeah. weeks. That's all he wants. <laughs> then he, then everything also, goes. the amount of time... How long was she kidnapped? Because, you know, the amount of time for her to type up the letter, send the letter, him read it, <laughs> and then decide to come yeah. back. Like, how long was she there? How many How many sexual assaults and rapes happened? She must have been there bet- And she's like... Week. She still has Yeah, and she's fucking left. unfazed. She's unfazed by all of that. Well, maybe she was just fighting back the whole time, you know? She still had her clothes on the day that she was kidnapped, so... Yeah. yeah. Listen, Reese, this this film is out of time. It literally has the 50s and 80s combined, so who knows? It, I mean, it does say it right at the beginning of the film, uh, another yeah. time and another place. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, yeah. if you blink and miss that, then this film is very confusing <clears throat> from the offset. And it only barely yeah. helps. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a good way to put it. It really doesn't help that much. I wonder if it was like an afterthought. Like, dude, what is up with the time? Oh, you know what? You're right. Let's uh, just add this in the beginning real quick. Because it's just a black well, screen this... with text, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's two things. It says like another time, another place, and then like something else. I forget what the other. And it's just like another kind of cliche yeah. opening line thing. Yeah. But again, like almost kind of leaning into that, it wants two cliches. Like it wants to have one and the and the other. Dude, those opening it's credits just... are really long, by the way. Oh, yeah. for fuck's sake, they're so long. <laughs> like you saw the whole entire musical act, and then it's like, oh, opening credits. <laughs> yeah, and then opening credits, and then it goes well into the fight that he has in the diner. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Which yeah, he makes sure he throws three men out the window just to make sure the entire <laughs> yeah. thing needs replacing. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. He's like, well, the, the window's already broken. Might as well throw the other guy out the other side to make it even. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was ridiculous. It was fucking sister. Like, it's like his sister's... Pl- like, he's clearly trying to help his sister. Yeah. And he's just cost her, like, fucking a whole window. <laughs> and then when he got paid, he didn't even take the yeah. money for the window. He, didn't even he t- just <laughs> took the money for... Uh, <laughs> he could have lied to Ellen and been like, no, no, this money is for my sister. I fucked her window. Like, I gotta fix it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine like in the, that scene where he's just like you know saying uh like what money he's gonna keep he's like here's the thousand i i promised mccoy and just imagine being like and here's an i'm just gonna take an extra cu- couple hundred just because my sister's window for a diner is kind of fucked uh, that's my bad uh but i'm just i'm just it's for her <laughs> no he wouldn't say my bad <laughs> yeah he, he's too much of an asshole <laughs> His character is just an asshole. Like it really is. it's evil. it's clearly supposed to be a stereotype of like a macho yeah. man hero guy, but he's just a prick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like like he steals a car and he's speeding down the road or just in that one stretch of street. And then yeah. the police turn up and he's like, Oh the goddamn police like he's moaning because the police are chasing him while he's driving a stolen car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they never care about the fact that the vehicle's stolen. <laughs> yeah. No, never care. <laughs> oh, man. And but then... I like how they pull him over and he's like, don't worry, I won't give you any trouble. Uh, like, while I'm here, I'm just visitting my baby sister. And I was like, you've already caused them trouble. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Can we talk about... Why would they believe this? Can we talk about the end scene where she's like, oh, yeah, I know you. You're the guy with the right hook. Like, what? Why are you yeah, saying what? that so lovingly? He punched you in the face and knocked you out. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many other options than punching somebody in the face. It, dude, it caught me One off guard time, when it happened. I was like, yeah, Whoa. it caught me off guard because it's there's no reason for it. Like it's <laughs> it's just pointless. Like he's got McCoy there. Like just be like McCoy. When we get to this train stop, I want you to hold her back while I run out the door just as it's closing. That way she doesn't know where I am and she can't get come get me. Like blah blah blah. Like. Nah, like he has to punch there's him. no reason to knock her out he has to punch her right in the face and then in the yeah. later scene she doesn't even have a black eye they should have gave her a black eye that would have been funny it's <laughs> that would have been terrible <laughs> but no it's it's just he's just made he just makes terrible decisions even like i was talking to tony a little bit earlier oh, today yeah. um like about uh like he he just keeps like being mean and picking fights with everyone for no reason. Mm-hmm. Like even McCoy at the beginning, like they're supposed to be like building this friendship, yeah. and yet he's like constantly like, "Don't you fuck this up, McCoy?" And she's like, "Oh, okay, yes." <laughs> no, that, that and then they're friends. Good though. I, I felt like McCoy and his relationship was probably the best out of anybody else there. <laughs> It was better toward the end, but in the beginning, I didn't understand why she was still just hanging around and, like, doing what he was saying. Everyone, uh, everyone reacted like there was some sort of insulting subtext of what they were saying. Yeah. Or yeah. they'd be nagged ten times to do something. Yeah. yeah. Everyone was flexing in this film. They really were. Oh, <laughs> man. But yeah, uh, Reese, as to McCoy and uh, Tom's mm-hmm. friendship, I just looked at that as more of, like, a, you know brotherhood it's military they were both military i i kind of got it but it felt like assholes to each other it's really normal i felt like this was written like someone who thinks who knows that that's a thing in the military but has never been in the military oh yeah and so didn't know how to write it (laughs) obviously yeah but it wasn't too terrible for me like i saw that and i was like oh that's just normal fucking busting balls you know what i mean I'm not talking about, like, where they were busting each other's balls. I'm talking about where she's like, hey, I can help. And he's like, no, I don't want you coming, uh, like, coming with me and fucking it up. And, like, just being, like, 
just really terrible to her and she's oh. like dude like clearly i can help you i don't know what the fuck your problem is and he's like <laughs> fine but if you, you do exactly what i say nothing more nothing less you got that and she's yeah. like yeah just fucking just give me a thousand what's happening <laughs> give me a thousand dollars god damn it <laughs> yeah it was just it was nuts mm-hmm. oh, when uh um mccoy asked to stay at uh, cody's place and mm-hmm. then she gets her gun out and he immediately feels threatened by it and just lets her know she better not be thinking about using that gun or she's going to regret it. It's like they live in a world where the police are completely useless. That yeah, like yeah. Two cops in the whole station. <laughs> yeah. It's like... And one is one is a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the chief of police, the only uh, the two cops that like, drive around everywhere. They're like, they're like Gotham PD, but without Batman. You know, just <laughs> yeah, getting paid off and everything too. <laughs> it's all there. Yeah, you know, the chief of police will run an errand. For, if if you want to send a message to someone to say I want to fight you in the middle of the road, uh, he'll he will you know send that message for you rather than yeah. arrest you for kidnapping in the middle mm-hmm. of like. Also, <laughs> go on. why did why didn't he just have the other guy tell him that? Why did he have the other guy go to town and be like, Hey, he wants to speak to you over at the. The fucking what's a place? <laughs> and why didn't he just go? Hey, he's gonna fuck up McCoy tomorrow. Don't interfere. Whatever the fuck he said. Like, <laughs> like I don't understand why he needed a messenger to tell him a message, to tell him to go go somewhere else to get the message. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no idea, dude. It was fucking. That was a heck of a scene too. That this. Oh, okay. So another thing I had that I wanted to say is that. Uh... It feels like the director, or whoever, didn't know how to film fight scenes. No, it was yeah. like super up close and like fast panning left and right. I was getting dizzy. I was like, yeah. "Whoa, what's happening? What is happening?" But yeah, and it felt more like um, their fight scenes felt like uh, the fight scenes out of a musical because it was very uh, like it looked kind of dancey, you know, in the movies. Yeah. So I felt like if they if they leaned into that a little bit, I felt like it would have been fine. But uh, it just looked yeah. a little weird being all up close. Well, <laughs> what I remember from when I was looking up things about this movie, essentially, this guy, the guy who wrote and directed the movie just wanted to make like it. It, it feels a lot like a twelve year old wrote this movie because it's all the th- he wanted to make a movie mm-hmm. that are like just childhood twelve year old fantasies. He was like, "What do I want? What did I want to see in a movie when I was young? Explosions, motorcycles, leather jackets, and like a fight slip." <laughs> rock stars yeah fucking weird dancer woman like (laughs) essentially it's it was all of the random shit he wanted to see in a movie Mm. and he wrote it into a movie and then forgot that he wasn't 12 anymore (laughs) yeah because it's like yeah and here's our got rick moranis in it no one could beat our hero (laughs) yeah oh christ you don't even feel yeah and for some reason in that fight like during the points where willem dafoe was beating up uh cody yeah like Willem Dafoe started having more blood on his face, like, but like from cuts. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, yeah. I was like, why is he getting more damaged from beating up Cody? <laughs> because they both fell on that motorcycle. Remember? I guess he like tackled him. His face was like right in the way of that motorcycle. Dude, they just wanted to knock over motorcycles in this movie. I don't know what's going on. They wanted to blow motorcycles up. They must have had like yeah. a shit ton of motorcycles available. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, even that last shot with the gang, like, his entire gang... His entire gang had motorcycles. That's a lot of fucking motorcycles. Yeah. It's a lot of motorcycles. Like, damn. What bullets what did Cody have in his rifle? That the explosive kind? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. I tell you, when he's shooting the cars, and all he's doing is, like, shooting the tires, and he's blowing up the whole car. Dude, he shot a leaky pipe. I didn't even know that pipe was yeah. leaking with... Hold on. First of all, he beat the pipe with his <laughs> yeah. with the butt of his gun with the gun to make it leak. Because that well, works. like nobody's doing anything. Like this is a huge gang of people. We all saw they had guns at the end. Mm-hmm. Where were their guns when they saw the guy in the middle of the fucking road who clearly <laughs> blew up their place? Well, they just I guess they just didn't have them available. Just, I, I guess safe in their their own ways. So they were too busy riding their bikes guns? back and forth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's their home turf, man. They didn't expect it, so they don't have their guns. If you invade... Okay, so listen to this. If you invade a military base, all of our mm-hmm. guns are in a fucking safe. We don't have any guns on our military bases. We would all have to go... Like, none of the soldiers there are currently armed. So we'd all have to yeah. run to the armory and, like, wait for the weapons to be handed out. 
But we're not. We don't well. just have guns. You know what I mean? Well, we know what to do now. I <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, I know. It's fucking crazy. It's ridiculous. That's pretty ridiculous. Tony, do you have? Uh, you said you had some notes. Oh. So do you have any any things you wanted to say more about the film that uh, the, yeah, uh, <laughs> they've written down. Uh, well, I remember um, thinking the first time watching this film, um, not not really knowing what was to come, you know. So that's <laughs> so the big, so the, the the opening is quite, you know, the music's quite catchy, and you know, I, I, yeah. if you understand when they say another time, another, uh, you know, in another place, that the sort of Zoot Suits band <laughs> with uh, sort of playing new wave music. Is not so confusing. <laughs> I, yeah. I like the way the the get the biker gang come in and they were like silhouetted, and you can see everyone sort of like yeah. dancing and they were completely still. And then the way the light sort of rose up and you can see Willem Dafoe's face. Um, don't understand why he shouted no when she uh, stopped singing. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. It's, I was like, now. like get her now. I, I, the only thing I thought that he might have said is go. Well, no, As in, I like, had, go, I had go get her. on when I was watching it. I'm pretty sure he said now. So what did he say? I'm, I'm pretty sure he said now? now. Like, get her now. Okay. Because he came I thought he's... Yeah, yeah the, the two times that... T- I've seen it, and I'm assuming Tony's saying the same, is, like, I heard no. Like, no! Like, <laughs> I thought he was, like, a scorned ex-boyfriend who was really mad at her doing successfully. <laughs> That's... Yeah, I don't know what I thought. I was just watching it. I was like, okay, what's going to happen? And uh, I didn't think he was just going to kidnap her like that. I thought there would have been a, like a yeah. brawl or whatever, yeah. but no, he just stopped off the stage, grabbed her, and the put entire, her on a motorcycle. The entire town have turned up for this performance, and then they've kidnapped yeah. her on stage in front of everyone. Mm. <laughs> this beloved star. <laughs> yeah. And we clearly see by the end of this movie that the whole town has guns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did, but they were all at their house, Reese, remember? Like, yeah, like, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I remember thinking... Sorry, I no, I, no, I remember I remember thinking uh, Willem, when some of the, the facial expressions of Willem Dafoe just made me think mm-hmm. that in a way he was sort of wasted or it was wasted not putting a helmet on him for Green Goblin in um, Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just put green yeah. face paint on him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was original like test footage of that, but like the studio didn't like it because studios are always dumb. Yeah. Um, but like I, you know, you do see his face, and you go like, "Yeah, that I." He looks like a goblin. That's why you cast him. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, fucking great. He's just he's he's a really good actor. Yeah, really. There's that one part where where he calls the gang, and like the side of his cheek just like trembles. Like it's like a like there's a smile, like a smirk that's trying to get through, but he's just like it's just like oh, I was, I was like Jesus, that's it's really really good. <laughs> I love Willem Dafoe, dude. Like, yeah, no, he's great. He was, there was he, a. It's crazy to see him this young because it's still just like, yeah. yeah, that's just. He's just as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, there was like a long streak on the the film group that Tony and I are in, uh, where we just watched like a, a just like with no real plan, like we just accidentally watched Willem Dafoe movies, like oh, really? constantly. Dude, he's in a lot of stuff. Like you can accidentally he's do that very stuff, easily. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I and he's always a joy. Like I'm never upset when I yeah. see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. He's great in Lighthouse. Uh, yeah, Marcos, you haven't seen the Lighthouse, have you? No, I need to watch it. I need yeah. to watch it. I really want to. It's really good. Because like, uh, yeah. it, it's it's right at uh, what's his name, Robert Pattinson's, uh, like when he was starting to get more, well, I guess better roles. Yeah, because like he was, you know, he got kind of fucked for the Twilight series. So it's like nobody wanted to um, cast him for anything. Um, I don't think he got fucked. I think he would just. I think he just knew that he wanted to do these kind of films. Like he he did the kind of smart move of he was like, right, I got these movies. They're gonna set me for my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll do them even though I hate it. I'll just do them when I'm really young, and then I'll just spend the rest of my life doing independent small things that I really enjoy. So like the uh, what's it called? Um... The fucking actor, Harry Potter, I forget his fucking name right now. Well, one of the Harry Potter actors was Robert Pattinson, so... <laughs> oh, shit, you're right, but no, I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah. you know, Harry. Oh, Rupert, no, not Daniel Rupert. Radcliffe. Um, Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe, Radcliffe. That's yeah, it. there you go. He basically does yeah. that shit now. He, Dude, he's been in a lot yeah, of but, crazy uh, weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've not really cared for the movies that he's been in, though. 
Not against him as an actor, mm-hmm. uh, but but I mean he just yeah. does whatever he wants is what I'm saying. Like, yeah, he, he does, does whatever he wants. Yeah, cool fucking. And that guy, rules. that guy's minted. That guy's got is super set for the rest. Oh of his life. yeah. <laughs> Were you? Uh, me, dude? Yeah. Were you not a fan of Swiss Army Man? Yeah, I didn't watch <laughs> that. Damn it, I want to watch it still. <laughs> the ending really, uh, like, it was, I was kind of like, oh, this is a nice movie, and then the ending made me go, ah, oh, for fuck. Like, <laughs> so fuck I heard this. it gets like, weird, like perverted kind of yeah. weird. Or no, it doesn't get creepy. perverted. It just gets stupid. It like gets for me, stupid. it gets stupid for me. Okay. Uh, there's definitely creepy stuff to it uh, in the film, like kind of perverted and creepy. But it's it's a movie about a guy who's going fucking insane. So like, I don't really care too much. But then the movie at the end is like, is he insane or is he not? Who knows? I don't know. I'm like, no, tell me. Come oh, on. Like, really? I'm not That's looking weird. for. Yeah, and it does. Yeah, it's just it just seemed a bit of a silly, immature ending that yeah. I just didn't really care for. Well, I mean, you are watching something called Swiss Army Man, and it's kind of fucking weird. <laughs> I don't know, I thought it was gonna be like, like Castaway if if Tom Hanks found a dead body instead of a fucking ball. <laughs> oh, and what he'd be playing with a dead body in his imagination. Yeah, like just like, it, like that would be interesting. Yeah, because but that's kind of what the beginning of the film is. Is like guys lost in the middle of nowhere and finds a dead body. Yeah, and he because he's so lonely, he's like, well. Well, befriend the body <laughs> yeah, goes a okay. little bit nuts. Yeah, yeah. there's a story written about that. It's really weird. But yeah, you, yeah, and then they made into a movie. It's Swiss Army Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, horns. it's a bizarre film. Mm-hmm. Are we talking about Swiss Army Man or still? Uh, <laughs> I still talking about like you think like Both, Streets yeah. of Fire is just like it. It's it, it's it's someone who doesn't know how to make a film got to make a film. Yeah. You know? And they just and was given a very big budget. <laughs> they just put threw everything at the wall, and just wanted yeah. to make something that was like a western, but set in modern times. But then in the fifties, but then they wanted yeah. 80s music, wanted it to be a musical. Yeah. But it had to be a big city because they wanted it to look like New York or Chicago. But also, it's a small town where everybody knows each other. <laughs> yeah, there's some of the background music where the guitar playing is very like cowboy guitar music yeah it's like burp, 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 like that yeah no 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 i have no idea what you're doing Reese. i had no clue but <laughs> how dare you everyone listening will know what i mean <laughs> which is no one <laughs> but i'll uh... let you know when i uh, listen to it and uh, when it comes <laughs> oh, would you would you actually listen to a podcast with yourself i, on d- it? I don't know i don't think so <laughs> yeah. we're gonna find out in a monday like that? What, listening to yourself on a podcast? No, isn't there a what podcast that's literally just one person talking? Yeah. Like the whole time. There's a lot of podcasts where it's like that. There is? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Uh, I just the to... Bill Burr podcast is that. Chris D'Elia podcast is that. It's a lot of like, strangely, or at least the ones that I know of, it's a lot of um, well, comedians. And I think it's Bill just them Burr's... just kind of like. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're stand up. So, I mean, that's essentially yeah. them talking to themselves anyway. So Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, hold on. I'll be back. I need to grab some tell I have a fucking headache. So, cool. Go ahead, guys. Continue I was about to like me. for some reason like offer some ibuprofen, but then I was like, <laughs> how nice of you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I, like, I appreciate oh, the consideration. He'll be with you in three to five days. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'm trying to think of if three to five working days is an expression in the in the U.S. or if we just say. I don't be with you in this amount of time, and then if you assume the weekend, we think you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Does working days include the sa- a Saturday? I've never known. No, I think I I think uh, when 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 they say three to five working days in the UK, I think they're just trying to say, look, it's not going to turn up on the weekend. <laughs> three three to five working days means uh, if it lasts longer, the working days is why. Yeah. Yeah. Don't blame it. Don't get angry at us. Yeah. Don't at us. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't at us. <laughs> Jesus. Apparently, like, uh, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say there. And it was, it was going to be about postage, so to be honest, it wouldn't be that interesting anyway. So. <laughs> Are you uh, drinking anything at the moment? Um, I've got, I got a, a scotch, um, but I'm not really drinking it because it's not that, um, not that great. No? To be honest. No. Yeah, I... I because I have uh, two whiskeys downstairs that are quite nice, so I don't want to like drink them on the podcast when I'm not really like paying attention to what I'm drinking and like um, and just kind of go through really nice they need, scotches. They need to be well, one scotch. Yeah. 
Yeah, they need to be savored, yeah. Thank you. Um, so I, I just went to Morrison's today before work to get groceries, and I was like, oh, well, I'll see what they have there for, for whiskeys. And I, I was like, I'll try this one. It's a, like a random uh, single malt scotch that was like just – I was like, well – I, the other ones that were like there I knew of and I like knew I liked them so I was like well I'll try the thing that I have not tried before and I should not have done that right well you tried well, you I said like it. I tried <laughs> are you having a you have anything with you Tony? um I've gone with a Welsh uh, ale double dragon nice ooh nice. bell and Vol? double dragon yeah. yeah I love the theme you got going on there yeah 80s <laughs> 80s I feel it no, it's just a Welsh beer, dude. Double Dragon, Reese. Which, which, don't you know about Double Dragon? I don't know about Double Dragon oh. outside of the beer. Well, we gotta watch Double Dragon now. Yeah. Okay. Can. Well. You never. You've Darn. never played the game Double Dragon. I've never played the game. Do- I, the only Double Dragon I know is the beer. Oh my God. Show my age now. No, no, I know about it. I've yeah. never played it, but I know about it. Yeah. They've done remakes of it recently, actually. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm playing through right now? That's just like an uber blast from the past. Uh, and I'm really upset because I played, yeah, I'm playing it in kind of the wrong order. Um, is I'm playing God of War 3 right now. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> such a good game. <laughs> I've played such a long you time. You just ruined yourself because 3 is like one of the best. And then when you go to play the other yeah. ones, you can be like, wow, this sucks. No, because that, that was the problem is it was on sale for like five quid on the PS store. Oh, nice. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I'll get that. Like I'll, I'll just play through that, and then like halfway through it, I was like, "Fuck, I really want to play the other hey, two. Hey, Reese, have you heard? <laughs> have you heard? And I feel like I'm gonna blow your mind when I say this. But have you I heard? know there's an. I is there? Are they making a, a second new one? Because I know they made the other one. Well, they are making a new. second new one, but it's not out yet. Yeah. What I was gonna what talk gonna about though was Mass Effect trilogy. Yeah, I have heard. Remastered completely, including the first one, so that they can look better. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna fucking get it. I need it on my PC, dude. <laughs> but that's the thing is, I already own the games on PC. Oh, I don't own them on PC yet. So. Yeah, I already own the own the games on PC, uh, like on Origin. So I'm like, well, why would I pay like fifty or sixty quid? Because the remasters to own them. A lot. Yeah, it's changed a lot, but at the same time, like one of the reasons I play them is nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, but it'll make it better. It'd be cool. Will it make it better? What if I play it and I'm like, ah, I don't enjoy this as much as the original ones. Well, luckily Steam allows you to return it, so up to you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> and I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it on Steam though. I'd buy it on Origin. So I am drinking some green tea. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Oh, I always do feel kind of bad about that because, like, I'm always like, "Oh, I'm having a a beer or a whiskey," and Marcos is like, "Well, it's 10 a.m. for me, so <laughs> yeah. just gonna rock with a calm tea." Yeah, that's normally what I drink. <laughs> just pretend you're on UK time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, drink with I us. had a mule, uh, Moscow mule last night, so at least I did that. So, but that was that was last night. <laughs> Nobody was on the podcast for that. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, I had a good time still. You know. Yeah. That's what you just need to do one of these times next week, maybe next, next week. week when when Dave's with us and All we're right. doing it a little bit later. Like uh, I'm gonna take just, you know, you know, I'll pregame. I'll take two shots. You're pre-game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two shots and then make my mixed drink, and it'll be an interesting podcast. If you if you pregame, I'll pregame. That's fine. I'll do that. I'll just take drink another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like good good plan. Yeah. Let's do it. Anyhow, I miss beer. <laughs> um, as I've said a few times yeah. uh, this month, um, I don't know if I've told you, Tony, but Heather and I are doing like a a low to no carb diet, right? Um, because you know, uh, Christmas Christmas put a lot, we put a lot. Well, I put a lot on. No, 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 I'm not going to say it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'm just like trying to trying to just lose some weight by doing a no carb diet, um, which is d- difficult because I've never wanted bread so much in my life. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. My girlfriend keeps uh, dropping hints that maybe I should go on some <laughs> form of diet. Still haven't taken them yet. Yeah. yeah. Like, Having chips again, you okay? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. do do what Heather and I did. Choose the shortest month of the year. February. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I was like, well, considering it, this is 28 days in February, it's like, what if we get to the end of February and like, why don't we just do it for three more days just so we get to 31 days, like a full big month? And she was like, you can fucking do that, but uh, like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> 
And uh, that was before we even started the the diet. Now, uh, I'll tell you what I'm not doing the other three days. I'm fucking, I'm gonna wake up midnight on March first. I'm just gonna fucking <laughs> scarf a fuck ton of wine gums and bread. Eat some bread, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Bread and donuts and ever. I'm just gonna put on like all weight that I lost this month <laughs> in like an hour. It's really easy to put on weight, man. So it don't, is really don't do that to yourself. Don't, don't let all that yeah. go to waste. <laughs> but the thing I miss the most really is just beer, because like mm. it's like it, it's made me realize that like drinking isn't really something I enjoy that much. It's it's like beer that I really enjoy. Yeah. It's like I'll be like, oh, I'll have a, a whiskey, but like it just doesn't hit me the same way that a, just a nice cold beer not even a cold beer just just room temperature beer which you know yeah. in the winter time here is fucking ice cold so. <clears throat> yeah see i uh when i drink i drink for the i drink for the taste normally which sounds weird to yeah. a lot of people because they're like oh alcohol yeah. tastes fucking disgusting i just drink to get drunk and i'm like no i don't do that i don't drink to get yeah. drunk <laughs> and, that's what uh, i was saying to tony before when you, when you were gone is Cause he was like, "Oh, what are you? Are you drinking anything right now?" And I was saying, "I, I have a scotch with me right now, but it's a scotch I just got when I was uh, at the store today." Yeah. And it was a, it was a it was a chance one. I was like, "Ah, I'll try this one. It's on it's on sale. I'll, I'll give it a go and see what I think." Yeah. And it's just kind of it, it's just kind of a boring scotch. It tastes exactly like what you'd imagine a single malt Scottish whiskey will uh, taste like. Yeah. It's it's kind of got a dark burn to it uh -huh. not really many other complex flavors going on and then it's just got like a smoky finish and i'm like okay well that's what i expected from a scotch so it's nothing really fun or interesting from it you know mm -hmm. yeah. should have just gotten that jameson stout again uh dude i had a, that was that was the thing. i had this crazy drink it was called a smoky old-fashioned right yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an old-fashioned yeah but uh they put like a piece of charcoal inside of it and they put another glass on top and it's crazy yeah. and it just like fills with a bunch of smoke in there and you take off the glass and you drink it and it tastes like i'm drinking a fucking campfire it's fucking nuts yeah it's actually really good there's a a bunch of weird shit like that there's a there's a um i don't know if it's a chain tony uh, you can tell me if i'm wrong okay. uh, but there's a, a place in cardiff called the alchemist mm -hmm. oh cool. um, i like the name and uh, it's just got like it's really expensive there, but all the <laughs> drinks are like cool shit like that. Like it always comes with weird, crazy things. But you gotta, yeah, you gotta pay for that shit. Yeah, I'm not I sure this... if, if that's. A, I'm not sure if that is like a, a chain. Might hmm. be just like a one-off type place. That's yeah. pretty cool though. Pretty fucking cool. Yeah, and again, the name it's really cool. So this is place. Uh, I guess it's like the restaurant and Vampire Diaries or whatever. Um, which is there's a, a restaurant show. in Vampire Diaries? I don't know, man. I don't watch the show, but I was hanging yeah, out man. with this chick, and she was like, "Yeah, let's go there." So I went there because it's local. It's here uh, where the Vampire Diaries is filmed, and um, it's. Uh, I went in there, and the place is pretty chill. Apparently, oh, it's the same exact uh, bar that was filmed in. Uh, I think it was Prisoner of Azkaban. I remember when they're like panning through that bar, and it's like uh, they got those wanted pictures and shit. Oh shit! Yeah, that, that's, okay. that's the same exact place. Um, that's they filmed that in Georgia. They filmed that in this bar in Georgia. Yeah. Why? So, because it looked cool. That's why. <laughs> that's strange. Yeah, but I just I thought I thought that a lot of principal filming for oh it was just uh, like sets. No, oh. was in the UK. Like I thought it was all in the UK. Oh, where they filmed Harry Potter shit. No, no, no this one was there. And uh, I go there and they have some Harry Potter themed drinks. I think a Polyjuice mm -hmm. potion. I think I got dude. That shit was good. Yeah, it was really tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Which is completely, you know, opposite to what the the movie and the books say about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just love how, uh, like, you go to a bar that's like a themed bar, yeah. and they have like all these cool named drinks where it's like named specific things, and then I I just read the ingredients. I'm like, oh, that's a this. <laughs> it's like oh, just yeah. like a really simple drink. <laughs> yeah, they just name it something crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyways, back to uh, Streets of Fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to drinking. What about that bar scene, though? <laughs> the bar scene? Which one? Like, uh, the one where she beats up one? the dude across the counter and hops over and gives him all the tequila? <laughs> oh, that's a great scene. <laughs> I can't believe we haven't spoken about that yet. I love that scene for one specific reason. And it's because uh, he walks into the bar. Is there... Like, clearly, you know, most people, they go into a bar to spend a bit of time there. Mm -hmm. He goes in, sits down, doesn't have a drink, and then leaves. He didn't. And then he's like, I gotta go sleep, bye. Wait, who? No, he had a drink, he had tequila. 
Did, oh yeah, she poured him a tequila, but that's it. He poured that's him. It. No, he, the bartender poured him a tequila. Did he? Yeah. And then they stole the bottle. Tony. Yeah, and then and then she stole the yeah. bottle. She's like, "What do you What yeah. do you feel like having?" And then she gave him the bottle, and then I don't think he had any after she was given the bottle. And then yeah. Like, but um, also, yeah, he like, like clearly he's his friend from like high school or something. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. totally unaffected by the fact that this random person beat the shit out of him and is robbing him he is affected he's laughing come on (laughs) it is the only time i think that he actually emotes yeah you're right i think that's the only (laughs) time he laughs is when his friend from high school is getting beat up by a chick (laughs) that's the most the most fascinating thing about this film is like who thought that michael uh pare is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Michael Parry. Yeah, yeah that's like the bartender. Who thought that he? No, that's uh, that's the Cody. That's the lead, oh, guy. the lead guy. Who thought this man yeah. was like a leading man, or even an actor? Yeah, you know? I didn't even <laughs> see it. He's completely wooden. Um, yeah, I, I imagine Stone throughout the entire film. He does look really you know stoned. Who he looks like to me though. He kind of looks like you know who I would have liked to see instead, and this is gonna be cliche but i mean he kind of looks like a skinnier version of him he looks like a skinnier version of um of oh god damn it reese you know the guy he, lawrence fishburne no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Oh, god damn it why can't i think of his name john candy um no <laughs> no no firefly <laughs> fucking you know who i'm talking about oh nathan fillion, nathan fillion thank you he looks yeah. like a skinnier version of nathan fillion yeah and i feel like nathan um, fillion would have played the role way better <laughs> Well, I think regardless of who played it, it's like with Rick Moranis. Of like Rick Moranis is doing the best he can, but it's a shit script. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I enjoy terrible. Rick Moranis in this movie, but yeah. it's hilarious yeah. how he just is insulting to everyone in this film. Yeah, yeah. like insanely <laughs> insulting. Like, damn, dude, chill. You better get right uh, on the right page, Cody. She's my girl now, <laughs> and he's like saying it right in front of her. <laughs> And she just doesn't even go like, "Hey guys, by the way, I'm here." Oh, yeah. Just when, he's, you know. when he's when she's upset because she's like, "Oh yeah, we had a conversation." It's like, "What did did he say anything? Did he say anything about me?" <laughs> <laughs> like, is he talking shit about? Why me? is she so upset that he's got he's getting paid to save her? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I wrote that. Like, I wrote that down. Why is she? Why is she being hostile towards him because he got paid? He still yeah. saved her from basically being a you know raped. Yeah. 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 yeah, he he saved her from being raped and sexually trafficked, um, and like to be honest, you could clearly see that by the fact that he showed up to town that he was going to save her either way. But it was clearly just like him trying to like scam the other guy. Well, like he was like, "I'm going to do it either way, but I'm going to make you pay me, no, and I'm going to make you pay me a lot." He didn't know she was kidnapped when he showed up to town. Yeah, because she wrote a letter, didn't no, she? She was she like, "She didn't write the letter. It was his sister." Yeah, I know. A la- uh, his sister wrote the letter, and that's why he showed up. So he showed up knowing he needed to save No, 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 no. Ellen. All his sister wrote was, hey, I need you. That was it. There was nothing else in that letter. And then she signed it her name. It was like two little fucking sentences. No, yeah, That yeah. was it, man. So he did not know. That's why she told him about it when she met him at the bar. Or not at the bar, at the diner. Because he didn't know. And that other stereotypical okay. gang turned up and immediately yeah. got threatening and yeah. creepy and then got fucked yeah. up by Cody. And then we never saw them again. And this diner that looks like it's the diner from Back to the Future. <clears throat> it kind of does. Dude, I love that diner. I'm sorry. That just gives me nostalgia <laughs> every time I think about that diner. <laughs> but I was just waiting for like you know him to show up and see Rick Moranis there. And he's like, McFly! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this man. was only uh, Rick Moranis' second film. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So he did a film called Strange Brew before, then this, mm-hmm. and then his third film was Ghostbusters. Wow. I always forget that he's in Ghostbusters. Yeah. Wow, really? His this was only his second film, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean you could you could see the talent then. Like pretty obvious. Yeah. He did I I, I enjoy how Rick Moranis delivers lines, like this like over the top comedic way. Yeah. Um and I think it really, it like like I said, it just, it, it shows that it doesn't matter who you have in the film, the lines are really bad. Mm. And I mean, Willem Dafoe does a good job, but I think they, they intentionally gave the bad guy really good lines. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, like, they, I think they really tried to make sure he had good dialogue because they wanted the bad guy to be cool. And it was, it was cool. He was cool. I when mean, he fucking walks through the fire. Even the times when he like, wasn't uh, speaking, was like, though, because there was a lot of mm-hmm. moments of silence where they had this camera on him. And, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you could just tell he had that whole shot. He had the presence very easily. Yeah. Um, no, and easily. That's what I it's probably something where the, in the edit room they were like, can we use as many shots of him as possible? Because it's really bringing the movie up. <laughs> it really did. I mean, because, like I said, there was a lot of shots where he just didn't say anything. And it was good. Yeah. <laughs> he was just doing it. Yeah. <laughs> There was two points yeah. that um, Willem Dafoe's expressions just made me laugh. And the first one was obviously when he shouted no or go. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh! yeah. And then the second one was when Cody like clearly had him beat in the fight and just threw the sledgehammer down. And that just enraged him for some reason. Like He evened up the fight. Yeah. And yeah. that was yeah. like red rag to a bull and he just went insane. But he's just like, ah! you know. It yeah, happened. his uh, lip was quivering and everything. Like <laughs> it was weird. Oh, man. It, it was good. He made a lot of odd expressions in that fight. Like the one where where like Cody's like pushing the sledgehammer down on him, yeah. and he's like really trying to push it back. Like yeah. his fa- he looked like he was gonna have a hernia. Like, <laughs> dude. But in my opinion, I think that really. I thought that was good. I liked seeing yeah. that. Fr- like, just like pure frustration and like ah, oh, trying to win. Whereas on the yeah. other guy's face, it was just like he's just stoned. Yeah. yeah, you can't, you can't fucking tell. Is he trying really hard? I can't tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But... No, imagine trying to like you know act opposite that though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like... You have to play off each other in scenes like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just sitting there being like, "Fuck it. What am I supposed to like? Should I? What do I do?" <laughs> oh man, dude, it was funny. But I think that's why in that fight we saw mostly Willem Dafoe's face versus the other guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't think we saw uh, Tom or Cody. Would it... Isn't it? Isn't it Tom? I thought it was Tom. It's his name is Tom Cody. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, we're saying different names here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but, no, it, it's it's confusing because he has uh, two first names as his first and last name. Yeah, and I guess if you want to be military, you can call him Cody. Just like fucking. Yeah. Like, what is it? Like, like the girl's name. McCoy. McCoy oh, McCoy. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, it seems like everybody in town except for his sister called him Tom. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. which makes sense because like she's not going to be like, "Hey, my last name." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna. You know what I hate when uh when fucking like they're they're siblings, right? And they call mm-hmm. each other by that name, like, uh, oh. "Hey, sister," you know, instead of like, "Yeah, hey, like sis." That. It's like, "Fuck off." <laughs> what are you? What? Like. Hey, bro. Yeah. I only say bro when I'm being fucking. Or I only say sis when I'm being fucking stupid. I'm trying to bother yeah. my sister. <laughs> so all the time yeah almost all the time. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't think i've I, I, like ever referred to like i've never referred to my brother as bro or brother like i'm just like or my brothers even just prick uh, usually like, none of them yeah prick yeah <laughs> not for your brother you know i'm not insulting you i've never met the guy yeah. i'm sure he's no, it's very not. nice well <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right you don't gotta <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. We understand. We understand. I I'm I didn't send it to him um, because I thought he'd find it really mean, and so he won't listen to this. So it's fine. Because um, he just messaged me the other. He messaged me like a couple days ago, yeah. and I finally responded today because uh, I finally found thought of a response that wasn't mean. Because um, he was like, "Hey, I bought a real lightsaber." What? And I was like, "I was like, do you mean a real? Li-? I wanted to just be like, do you mean a real lightsaber that cuts through metal, or like a two hundred dollar nightlight?" <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, what does he mean a real lightsaber? Because, like, what's the difference between a... Like, if that's what he calls a real lightsaber, what the hell's a fake lightsaber? Yeah. I was like, what do you mean real? And he was like, not one from Target. And I was like, that's oh, okay, not... That's that doesn't it narrow it down. It just means one that lights up and isn't plastic. And I was like, okay, sure. Well, he's he's like, it's like, heavy. And I was like, great. He's talking job. like those yes. $200 ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Which one Which one did he get? One that cuts through metal or a $200 nightlight? <laughs> Well, hey man, let him, uh, he wants to. What did you say to him though? Did, is that what you ended up saying? Uh, what did? No, I said, what do you mean by real? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a nice way to put it. I mean, because yeah. we have seen. <clears throat> go on, Marcos. Go ahead. Go on, Tony. Sorry, go on, Marcos. Yeah. Oh no, 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 it's alright. Sorry, right. I can say it afterwards. I, I was gonna say, surely he should have known how you would react. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like his brother does know how he's gonna react, like. 
majority of the time. But he asks. He just does it anyway. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, the amount of conversations I've heard between them, it's all the time. Like, Reese has the same response. So you know. <laughs> you know he knows. Yeah. <laughs> but he asks them anyway. He's away. He just throws that line he, out. He still goes for it. Yeah. He's a physical bike. He's like, maybe he's changed. <laughs> no, honestly, I feel like your brother likes the conflict between you two. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like just like a, the brotherly conflict yeah like a little bit yeah. i feel like he does like to argue with you a little bit no i mean that's fair because i definitely say things to him to ri- like rile him exactly, up exactly yeah because so. i know i know it's gonna rile him up exactly and i feel like he does the yeah. same thing to you <laughs> yeah actually i've no, seen him fair. do the same thing to you <laughs> yeah so that's that's yeah oh uh, i get it yeah, yeah i guess it's fair yeah so i feel like that's why <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but just with two hundred dollars, I could buy so many nice whiskeys. Dude, have you seen <laughs> and cigars? Ooh, dude, cigars! I could oh. buy some fucking car parts, man. I need some. I need some tires. You need car parts. But anyway, um, have you seen that that real lightsaber that they've made? Yeah, I've seen the real light. Tony, have you seen no. it? No, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's not. No, like, they. I mean, there's still. It's more like a. What? What is this? What is this? There's a type of lightsaber in the Star Wars universe that has a a hose connected to it. Mm-hmm. And it's more like that than it is a lightsaber, um, but it's really it's like a it's just like a beam of extremely hot plasma. A, like it is kind of yeah plasma, like plasma. essentially yeah yeah. It's not a laser. It's it's, plasma. Yeah. it's kind of impressive. It is um, dangerous. It's and scary. obviously yeah very dangerous. Yeah, uh, very hot for yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's fine. I would be afraid to hold that thing, let alone strap the fuel source to my back. Yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really cool though. Did they test it like if if it'll they like did. can you make two of them clash? Oh, um no, I don't think they were able to test that. They probably wouldn't clash, but yeah. Uh, they probably Cuz I don't imagine them. they would, but that would be cool. That would be, <laughs> but they tested it going through a shit ton of different objects and material. Yeah. I saw that. I saw them doing the scene from episode 1 where uh, Qui-Gon's like blasting through the the doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I saw them do that. Yeah, that was really cool. And like yeah. I said, very scary. I do not want to hold that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put my hand near what, uh, you know, now red hot metal that I'm making red hot and making hotter. Like if I accidentally oh, dropped it, there goes my foot, man. Like <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, because like, what if you, because you know your reaction when you hold something hot, if it's like your reaction is to let go real quick. So if I was holding that, and I accidentally ma- happened to touch a hot spot on it, because you know there is gonna be one, and I mm-hmm. just let go instinctively. Oh my god, that would be it, man. There's got to be safety devices on there where if you drop it, it just, just disconnects immediately. <laughs> yeah. So where do you think one? Well, thought... buy one of these? So good. Yeah. Amazon. Well, dark when can we buy one? <clears throat> they're they're custom made at the moment by like one dude on YouTube. Uh, yeah. You could probably commission one. It'll probably cost like a thousand dollars though. Which is... I would be shocked if it was that low. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I was watching them make it, and uh, honestly, the materials and what they do to make it isn't that complicated. So, cool. You're an engineer making some. <laughs> well, I don't want to fucking make it. Like, it looks like a pain in the ass. But you could probably get one for maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars. Cool. But uh, let's see. How much is that in pounds? Like seven hundred quid. <laughs> Seventeen hundred. <laughs> Fifteen hundred, maybe. <laughs> Dollars to pounds. Let's see. A thousand dollars is hey seven hundred and twenty-two. I wasn't that bad. I wasn't that wasn't that. Four thousand. Oh, okay. So it would be about fourteen yeah. for. Yeah, yeah, fourteen hundred. About five, fifteen hundred pounds. Damn, dude. No, I'm saying I'm saying seven hundred and twenty-two. Reese pounds. Reese, you need to. How much it is for a thousand. You need to get yeah. a good job out there so that you could come retire in America. I've got a decent job. Well, mm-hmm. keep making yeah. it decent and come retire in America. <laughs> Why would I want to retire in America when I can retire to, like, Northwest Wales, where the cost of living is, like, fucking pennies? You're right, you're right. That's a good point, that's a good point. But, uh, yeah. America, man. <laughs> Just get away from Cardiff as soon as possible, is it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Only only once, uh, once I once I get need to retire. Yeah, but dude. Car- yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, sorry, uh, Tony, are there any things that you need to say about Cardiff to redeem them? Because apparently I slagged them off so nah, much. That's fine. <laughs> I, th- I think you could make it, like, a weekly segment. You know, you can call it crap- <laughs> Crapping on Cardiff. Something like that. You know, where you, <laughs> you, just tell, you just tell Marco as well much you like, you know, what you hate about the city and the people who reside there. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like that segment we used to have shit that Marco says, yeah. Except shit it's Marco like, says, yeah. Fucking crapping on Cardiff, yeah. Like <laughs> it's a ring. It has yeah, a good ring to ring. it. You can have that for free. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's great. <laughs> I'll just take off the list bad at making names for things that I'll say about Cardiffians. Oh, thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> oh Jesus. I would love I would love to visit, man. I just want to go uh explore a little bit uh you know, in, in another country besides Mexico. <laughs> yeah. No, I I'd, I'd love for you to come to visit cuz to Shoney's or to Shoney's <laughs> to Tony's shock and surprise. I really like Cardiff and would enjoy showing you around. Yeah, yeah it's I would a nice, love to nice go. place. Yeah. Um, it's uh i've definitely got more gripes with swansea than i do with Cardiff, so <laughs> <laughs> which every every person from cardiff will be happy about i feel like so i feel like it's such a surreal experience uh getting shown around by like a local mm -hmm. it, it's crazy because um well when i went up to ohio for the first time with my wife and she was just driving around and like with no google maps mm -hmm. or anything i was like where yeah. the fuck are we it was just nuts being <laughs> Just like, oh, she just knows this place by heart. <laughs> you know, you know, it'll make that more insane for you what? if you come to the UK. Yeah, it's the streets aren't on a grid system. Oh man, that's so, so it's weird. more. It's like honestly, like even roads that I understand how they work. Yeah, yeah and yeah, I've yeah. seen them on a map. Yeah, like I think I'm teleporting when I walk. <laughs> like I'm like I'm like okay, if I take this road, I go straight. But if I take this road, I go straight. Mm -hmm. Um, like, and they're both at a, like an, a, like a 90 degree angle to each other. And I'm like, but somehow at the end of both of these roads is like essentially the same spot. And I don't know how that worked. <laughs> like yeah, all the time in the UK. Cause they, it's like just slight curves that I'm just not noticing, mm -hmm. not understanding. Everything's not North South. It's just, it blows my head off every time. Yeah. Dude, you know what I thought was crazy? So I was recently watching the do that documentary on, uh, it was on Netflix, right? It was called The Ripper. It's about that guy. I think oh, it was in the, yeah. the 70s and 80s, I think it was. Yeah, the the uh, Whitechapel murderer, wasn't it? Is that Jack the Ripper? No, no, no. Or is that a different that, guy? That's Jack the Ripper, the Whitechapel murderer. Oh, okay. That's that's Jack the Ripper. But I'm talking about this copycat in the 70s and 80s, not 1870s and 1880s. Oh, okay. Like, 70s and 80s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Yorkshire Ripper. And um, it was, really, oh, it was okay. really interesting seeing, like how the police are divided amongst all these little tiny towns and shit and then yeah. to like the larger uh larger i guess you could call it county um and it was yeah. just crazy because like there's so many different areas and then each spot has their own dialect too of like a or not dialect but accent and everything to their language yeah. and it was just nuts they were they literally brought in a uh, linguist because this guy sent mm -hmm. in a recording saying he was a ripper. They brought in a linguist to listen to it. And uh, they said, oh, yeah, that's his accent. He's from this area. Search that entire area for him. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, So, so did you enjoy a northern English accent? <laughs> um, I mean, it didn't really sound too... too uh... I don't know. I wasn't really. Paying if you're about attention. to say it didn't sound that different, no, I'm no, no, no. Fucking... I wasn't. I wasn't really paying attention to the accents too <laughs> yeah. much. I mean, there were so many different accents right. going on. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was just it was nuts. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to that. I was more so paying attention to the way that uh, the whole police force was organized and and really yeah. struggling to stay organized because of uh, mm -hmm. how everything was going. Like they actually had cops. Like they had two thousand cops going from door to door asking people questions like have you seen anything and one of them <laughs> just cops, going door to door going are you the ripper yeah nope. no oh, yeah. pretty much that's what they were doing <laughs> and of course they talked to the ripper and he said no i'm not the ripper and they kept going <laughs> he paused went, oh, no no i'm not yep yeah <laughs> <laughs> and did a side side glance like, maybe <laughs> it was <laughs> it was nuts it was a complete like just a complete shit show and i believe the uh the, the leaders of the whole investigation all ended up getting basically fired because of how terrible it went down uh, because they did they did actually talk to the guy but then they got hung up on this accent thing because somebody sent in a uh, a fake recording it wasn't actually the ripper yeah but it was the only lead they had so they went hard on it to try to get the uh you know the, the population out of panic to let them know yeah we got something 
But oh, don't worry, he's from here. Exactly. If you don't live here, it's fine. And so now when the women were going out at night and they were talking to guys and whatever, because, you know, he would typically follow women home after they'd be out and, and, and then kill them. Well, if he didn't have that accent, they felt safe. <laughs> but if a guy did have that accent, you're about to get avoided like the fucking plague. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's really crazy. It was, it was really interesting. I, I'd suggest watching it if, you, if it's over there. I don't know if it's over there just because of the content. I don't know how... Yeah. How much, no, it's it's uh, what's it called the over here, but like um, there. no, it's it's over here on on Netflix. But my girlfriend and I just kind of gave I we just don't really I'm not really into like serial, serial killer, killer documentaries. Yeah, I'm yeah. not either, not really. But uh, I watched the Richard Ramirez one. Just Plus, because that happened. I'll be honest. Huh. Yes, yeah, I good. Go ahead. Oh no, no, I was just saying I watched the Richard Ramirez one just because I've always heard about that from my family because yeah. they grew up with that. And yeah. then uh, I watched The Ripper just because, you know, I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? I clicked on it and I was like, oh, this is actually quite interesting. <laughs> but yeah, it is interesting to see how the police force works. That's what I like about it. Yeah. My problem is just Netflix documentaries can be a bit frustrating because they're always, they, they're, they're somehow their own genre. Netflix no, they are. They, they definitely have a very one-sided view most of the time. Yeah. But the view that I like to see is not that of like the reporter trying to you know glamorize everything but mm -hmm. the police when they st when they actually bring the police in and, and interview the police officers and you really get to hear it from their side that's what i like to hear and that's what i like to see i think it's really interesting to see how they catch these killers like because i don't care about the killer i don't he's a terrible person I, I feel like he should not be made into a famous symbol like ted bundy was that, yeah. that was a shit show I don't watch anything regarding him because all that you ever hear is he was in a very attractive, nice man. It's like, I don't want to hear that about a guy who's a horrible yeah. murderer. There's a stand-up uh, that's no, all we... about Ted Bundy. And he's, he, he, oh, really? He, yeah, but he, it's this I can't remember the name of the comedian. But he says everyone praises him for like representing himself in his trial. <laughs> he got the death penalty. You know? <laughs> it was a fucking disaster. You know? He's no genius. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, God. that's that's not great. I do apologize uh, both, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use the restroom very quickly. But do keep chatting. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want, but yeah, I'll be back. Wait, you said there's a whole stand up on it. Yeah. Um, it's on Netflix. I can't remember. Oh really? I will once I, I once I find it. I will let you know the name. But uh, it's yeah. I'd like to hear that. He just basically just points out that this guy was not is not someone to be celebrated. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. I definitely with with the Ripper. Uh, the Yorkshire Ripper. I, at the very least, mm -hmm. I'm glad that this documentary didn't come out while he was still alive. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, no <clears throat> serial killer should be able to sort of, you know, feel their yeah their fame, like feel like they're famous. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, I agree. That that shit's crazy. I think Richard Ramirez got to feel all his fame, and that was that was terrible. But then again, the community hated him at the same time. Their their part in capturing him is really crazy. The cops were really struggling. To, yeah. to find him and then uh once they put his face out there and, and actually knew his name people came out of the woodwork trying to find this guy and they ended up a whole community ended up beating him down in the street oh of course, until the cops the can stalker. get there yeah the night stalker yes yeah. yes i've watched that doc yeah. yes i've seen that yeah yeah that was crazy right yeah I, I thought that one was a really well done one and the fact that the detectives who were on the case were still alive to talk about it i thought yeah. it was really cool it's, but man. And they were able just to show how they were sort of like mm -hmm. hampered in their efforts. Like, yeah. uh, like where like sensitive like evidence was released to the public very early. Mm -hmm. And they're like, fuck, like this, we could have tied, if we caught this person in the act, we would have been able to tie him to every single murder that he's committed because yeah. of the, because <clears throat> of like the shoe print. The shoe print, yeah. Yeah. That was when they found the shoe print. And they were able to track it to like one store, yeah. And there was only this many made. I thought that was crazy. Oh, Are man. we talking about? We're talking about Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was nuts. Like that makes me think twice about buying rare shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was crazy how they tracked this guy. Like, yeah. if you haven't seen the Richard Ramirez one, Reese, I highly suggest mm -hmm. that one. <clears throat> okay. It's really cool. I'm in the middle of watching the uh, documentary about the Cecil Hotel. Oh yeah, I hadn't heard about that one, but I haven't I haven't watched anything about it. Isn't the isn't that the one that's in a more American Horror Story? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. um, it, but it's. I know they had one. Um, 
you know, it's a real hotel. It's in LA, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. um, over the over the cut. Look, the course of its existence, it's had lots of problems, lots of crime, mm-hmm. lots of people being mm-hmm. killed, lots of drugs. Even yeah. uh, the Night Stalker has, has stayed there himself. Um, oh wow! Yeah, um, and this girl went missing, and Jesus. she turned up in one of the water tanks. Oh so, no! Ooh. So yeah, um, but these <laughs> basically nasty. these internet sleuths. Mm. Start. They they take it upon themselves to investigate it, and it's like, have you seen um, "Don't Fuck with Cats"? Yes, that's so. That's such a crazy one too. Yeah, yeah. This is like the this is like the other end of that, where it's like, "Don't fuck with cats." It's like these people actually had useful information that had and the, the police. cops just ignored it. Yeah, yeah. They, they might have saved someone if they actually listened to them. These nut yeah. jobs mm. on the Caesar Hotel um, documentary are just coming up with like conspiracy theories and mm-hmm. you know it it has no basis in reality it's just them yeah just speculating yeah speculating and going yeah. down rabbit holes and you know ending up sort of like getting getting someone you know accusing someone of being the murderer and then ha- that person yeah. then having their lives ruined mm-hmm Man, that is yeah. That's spoiler nuts, alert. Because I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. Because I feel like that happens so much uh, these days in terms of uh, like wild speculation and people yeah. getting their lives ruined. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. Like the whole cancel culture that was kind of going on for a while. It's just kind of going on for a while. It's kind of still a thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's still a thing, but yeah. I feel like COVID has kind of slowed it down a bit. <laughs> yeah, COVID slowed it down Actually, a little bit because everyone. It didn't. We canceled Donald Trump. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in fairness, if 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 I wanted one person to be canceled, it would be Donald. Trump. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Dude, he got so canceled, he was deleted from social media. <laughs> yeah. Which that's a whole can of worms that maybe we can get to if if we want to, but no, 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 uh, no. I, we, I could, we could end it right there. <laughs> we could talk about that okay. later if we want, but I haven't. Yeah, politically, America's been a little silent right now because of everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, direction. Yeah. yeah, I haven't heard too much craziness going on. <laughs> in in other craziness, that's going to mean only things to Tony and I. Um, <laughs> England won, but I think they got an extra point based on how many points they've got by the end of this game. Because yep. I think they were already at three tries by the time I stopped watching and we started doing this. Yeah. Nah. So, yeah. It's they were, Italy was doing fucking great right at the start and like right out the yeah. gate. If the game <laughs> and then uh. Sorry, go on. No, no, that was about I was it. Say, if, if the game was five around. minutes long, you know, Italy, <laughs> Italy have crushed it, but you know. Unfortunately, yeah. they had another seventy-five minutes to try and sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, like <laughs> England at bay. Those games like usually really long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, uh, it was uh, the Six Nations going on right now oh, yeah. uh, for rugby. Oh. So um, I was just shocked because, like, you know, started the game and I was like, "Oh fuck, Italy!" Like, <laughs> did they just come back with a vengeance this year? Like, Jesus! And then, uh, and they they were doing a good job of defending, yeah. like keeping England back for a while. And then I think uh, they just. Let the floodgates open. I saw um, a obviously Johnny May's try, which was really good. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a really good try. Yeah, <laughs> just jumping off try? the side. No, I'm kidding. I'm just fucking. Marcos, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break COVID regulations to smack you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like being the American who doesn't know jack shit about anything going on. Um, Speaking of American, then did you watch uh, the Super watch Bowl? Super Bowl, Marcos? I did, and it was largely one-sided um, it was sad <laughs> yeah yeah like it was kind of messed up too with the with <laughs> i the felt refs. so bad yeah the refs were super picking on the oh chiefs oh my god i know that was bullshit and uh they just yeah. they just kind of got destroyed and i like the yeah. halftime show though because i do like i do like the songs the weekend did <sighs> i the thing is i like the weekend me too but i just don't understand why people think this kind of music is good live it's not it's it's supposed to be very well produced well i thought it was a good That's... show though like it was still a yeah. good show definitely I definitely preferred that over fucking Adam Levine like two years ago. Oh, fuck me. Uh, that was that the was worst terrible, thing I've ever seen. Right? Yeah. God. And it was only, it was like, if if you were going to have Shakira and J-Lo perform, you had to do it the year after fucking yes. Five. Because it, yes. it was so disappointing the year before that anything was going to be fun. Exactly. 
But um, yeah. but yeah, so like I, I thought it was a good performance and everything, and I liked yeah. the songs. Uh, there was a couple of funny portions in it, like when he's grabbing the camera at like horrible angles. <laughs> yeah, Dude, that shit killed me. I was laughing so hard. But um, it was it was pretty good. It was it was a good show, but it's just I I always just get confused when people want like pop music yeah. live. I'm like, no, yeah. it's pop music is good when it's in a recording studio and they yeah. produce it incredibly well. So I like the weekend because uh. Like, you could tell this guy's a huge fan of the 80s. And so yeah. he incorporates that in so much of his music, and I love it. So it gives me, like, that... It, it's cool. It's cool to see it popular today, you know? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, I thought it was a decent show, but uh, the the game itself, like... I didn't even finish the game, dude. I just turned it off. <laughs> I was like, I'm tired. This is going yeah. nowhere. I'm done. <laughs> you missed, like, right at the end. Like, there was five minutes left, and the Chiefs were like, let's just do one more... Like, we can, we're, they were... Th- this close like to getting a touchdown oh, yeah. and uh, you can't see my hand to see the gesture of the, this close but <laughs> yeah you're holding like a really tiny violin that kind of yeah close. <laughs> but like you you can see like all of them were like listen we got five minutes left we're not gonna win but at least at least we'll get one touchdown mm-hmm. and like Mahomes just threw it and just got intercepted by oh, five minutes man. left on the clock and you like that was the point where I went okay I wanted the Buccaneers to win, uh-huh. but I didn't want to watch Patrick Mahomes, like, his soul leave his fucking body. <laughs> that's what uh, I just watched. Yeah. Dude, that, that it was... just cut to him, and he looked empty. Yeah. Like, it was just, I was just felt bad. Just felt bad for the kid, you know? Yeah. There wasn't, dude, I was talking to people about it kind of, like, the day afterwards, you know? And there were, there were so many people who I talked to who was just like, nah, I didn't even watch it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so many people. Like, I don't care about it. Like, and that's not normal for like the Super Bowl. <laughs> that's not normal for the Super Bowl, and um, I guess I, w- I would assume that's not normal for the South. But you know, I don't know. <laughs> I've do only know? been in the South for the Super Bowl what, like one, two years now. Really. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was it was it was not the greatest game. I hope you guys had it wasn't. games out over there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully the game. Today will be because I messed up, Tony. When originally I was like, "Hey, is it going to work time wise?" Because the because the game, because uh, I I thought the Wales game was the one at two fifteen starting, but now but the Wales game is the one that starts in fifteen minutes. So oh, sure. we got to. Re- oh, I was going to say fifteen minutes. So we can cut it thirty minutes short, but uh, we haven't talked about the movie much. <laughs> I mean, we did in the beginning for like thirty minutes. Yeah, uh, the, so I don't know how much I, there is to really say about, yeah, um, kind of about the that. obvious thing that you and I would maybe to discuss, which is the Proto Men, which I mentioned to Tony when Tony and I originally watched this movie and talked about it oh, I love the Proto um, in our film group. Yeah. But like the Proto Men is a, the second album is like clearly heavily influenced by this movie. Oh, dude, even the story, actually. I wanted to mention yeah. that too. Like the story in w- the way that it's told in the album. Yeah, I feel like this story is great being told across an album. Visually, yeah. though, as a movie, it doesn't work. <laughs> no. But in music, no. it's fantastic in music because I, I loved it. I love the Proto Men, uh, their their album. Yeah. And uh, listening to the story, you could just feel all the characters are so dramatic, or even and would... the album. The album does a really good job of balancing the fifties and eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And because you... for Tony. Uh, for context, the first half of the album is like a lot more like Western yeah, kind yeah, of Western, Western acoustic. Okay. Yeah. It's like really like simple and uh, like, yeah, it just sounds kind of like a Western cowboy thing. And then halfway through the the album, when it like transitions like, you know, to later and like later in time. And it just starts off with the sound of like the normal kind of guitar sound and a train. And the train kind of turns into a metro sound. And then the guitar turns into a synth. And then the next half of the album is 80s, oh, yeah. like, synth rock. It was rock. a great transition. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, else, what I was also going to say was I would like to see this movie redone as, like, a stage play and more musical. I feel like that'd be yeah. sick. But uh, I'm sure it exists. <laughs> but as, like, as a, as a movie, I felt like it didn't work too well. There is apparently a, um, like, an unofficial sequel to this is movie. There? Yeah, with with Michael Parry, who clearly went nowhere with his career, and this is the only thing he has going for him. Well, I'm down. I'm down to watch it. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I like watching shit. You know, like, I, you, there's a lot of shitty things I've suggested on this this fucking uh, podcast, man. <laughs> I like watching shit. Uh, but uh, what, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, I I gotta say something. It bothered me right okay. from the beginning. 
Um, mm-hmm. When they come in and the drummer is the first one to start playing and he's playing on an acoustic set but somehow making synth noises, <laughs> yeah, that killed me. <laughs> I was like, you could have just cut out like some square looking ass fucking plastic and put the sound over it, and it would have been it would have made sense with some PVC pipes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they paid for a, an acoustic set to make it sound synth, and I was just like, ah. and the reason why that bothers me, Tony, is I used to play the drums a lot, right, um, on an acoustic set. And yeah, so that that just affects me deeply. <laughs> but what did you what did you feel about this film? Did you like it? What did I feel? I liked it. I liked the film. I had a good time watching it. I mean, I never felt like the main character was gonna lose ever. There wasn't an ounce of like, yeah. Oh no, our there's no stakes. You know, like no suspense. But you know, I thought it was fun. I really, honestly, I really liked McCoy. I thought she was cute, and I liked her yeah. character. She's um, a fun character. I, I really like. She's her character. a good example of like realizing to change your movie a little bit for an actor because apparently, like McCoy was uh, just supposed to be a dude, and then they just they met this chick, and they were like, "You're really cool. We want you in the movie. We'll just change the role to a chick and so fucking go from there." When she was saying, "You're not my type," to Tom the whole time, I thought they were suggesting she was a lesbian. But uh, yeah, then at the and end, and there's that scene where she's like, Oh, yeah, I'm heartbroken because of some guy. Some guy I yeah, like, okay. And I, I, I don't know, that kind of bothered me a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know why it bothered me. I guess it just felt like it bothered. I think it's bothersome for the reason of like it feels like it's only there because if this was made today, that would have been like her character, mm-hmm. like she would have probably just been a lesbian. Um, but like because it was the 80s. And it's written by a twelve-year-old. I guess. Uh, you ha- the only reason that um, he can't get the girl is because she also is into a, another person, another guy. It was it yeah. was a wasted moment of what could have been clever writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could have mm-hmm. been very clever because we didn't even like. Need uh... to hear she and her character wouldn't have been made all about that. You know what I mean? Because a lot of things, yeah. a lot of mistakes that I feel like movies make when writing a gay character is they make that their character. You know, yeah. it's not just like, oh yeah, this is just a part of her, you know, and that you don't have to point it out. We just know, and it's yeah. fine. It's like in a movie that I've mentioned to Tony that I'm not a big fan of, and that I recently watched for the first time, Heat. <laughs> oh, um, I watched that actually. In in Heat, like his partner is is a lesbian, but like the first indication you get of that is just they're both in the car like doing a stakeout, and they both check out a girl, and then they look at each other and like go like she's hot right like like they both just like have that and you're like oh that's that's nice yeah. and then later in the movie he like has a screams at his wife like because she's jealous and he's like don't be jealous she's gay and it's like okay we didn't need that because yeah, the other scene necessary. was nice yeah <laughs> like you said her, her whole character is she's a cop the only thing we get was just this one scene where they look at the they check out a girl together yeah so it's like okay that's that's just a nice little we get the character a bit more like we have more yeah more you know, uh, edges to, to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would have been the same with McCoy is yeah. like, if she was just like, listen, buddy, you're not my type. And like, just, he's a bit too thick to realize that yeah. she's just like being like, I'm a lesbian. Dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's subtle. And I like the subtlety, yeah. but then it turns out, Oh no, actually that subtlety was there for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well then what is her type? Then? Wasn't the original, not, I think the, wasn't the original actor, actor? Okay. um, oh. was cast as McCoy, wasn't it? Edward James, uh, almost. Really? Was it really? I think I'm sure I've. You know, you get the sort of uh, trivia facts on. That's yeah. on Amazon crazy. Prime. I, uh... I'm sure, it's, or on IMDb. Yeah, I'm sure it says on there that he was originally he was going to be cast. And he passed. Dude, that would have been weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I guess um... he was too busy doing uh, Blade Runner. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think they liked um, Amy. Don't, he really missed out, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This would have propelled oh, him to stardom. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> but I think a- Amy. I think Amy. Oh, is it Mad Madigan? Is that her name? Oh, the girl who plays yeah. McCoy. Uh, I don't remember her name, but um, I'll be honest. There's only two things I've seen her in, um, and that's this and Uncle Buck. Yes. <laughs> um, Wait, she was in Uncle Buck. Yeah, she's his, uh, uh, the girl. part of McCoy was originally written as a Hispanic male named Mendez and was supposed to be played by Edward, Edward James Almos. No fucking way. <laughs> and then Bill Paxton, that that dude, yeah. the guy who played the bartender, who was like friends with him or whatever. 
I was surprised to see him, but I see him in so many damn movies. <laughs> He's like, everywhere. What the hell is he doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Amy Madigan, huh? Yeah, I, th- I, th- yeah. I think she uh, initially auditioned for the film. They liked her so much that they just, when um, he passed on the role, uh, they just changed it for her. <laughs> went, yeah, when, when almost read the script and he was like, mm, no. I'm going to give it a no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked her a lot. I thought she was great. Yeah. yeah. No, she's definitely really good. I Which was just upsetting because, so to to possibly blow people's minds here i had only just seen uncle buck for the first time like two months wow. ago really okay so what'd you <laughs> yeah think i'd never seen it let's get a, let's get a quickie right now what'd you think about it <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was, a, it was one of the funniest fucking movies i've seen in a long Dude, time john candy is a gem oh, man. yeah he the is. only thing i can't do with that movie is i just can't stand the fucking daughter like oh. she just needs to be smacked in the, the face fucking, and sent to fucking yeah the team military who's, like, school trying to grow yeah. up too fast She's like, she's like blaming her. She's like, I hate you, mom. You've ruined my life. And I was like, that's a really nice thing to say from your fucking bedroom in your silk pajamas, bitch. Like, <laughs> dude, like who it. bought you all those things? I love who? it when it brings out that big ass drill to scare the dude. That shit was yeah. fucking, that, that would have made me scared of shit too, though. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, he's hilarious. That movie. He's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, great. I was gutted when he, when he died. He was what, in 1994. Yeah. Um, oh. It was, I was born. Yeah, I, I, you know, he was, he was a treasure. He was, and then he died. It was, it was like, you know, at that, I was yeah. only what well, I was like, thirteen at the time. It was like, it was like losing yeah. a relative. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, he, yeah that's the, I always remember him from uh, as Barf in in yeah. Spaceballs. Oh, that's, that's what he always right, dude. I completely forgot he was Barf. Yeah. but uh, yeah, I th- I'm I a mog, like, half man, half dog. I, I'm my own best friend. I feel like that was always the charm of John Candy, though, is that he always kind of made you feel like, oh, I'm familiar with this person, oh. and so yeah. like that was he's that uncle was... that you don't really call. <laughs> he was he was hilarious, and then he could. Yeah pull out a dramatic performance that would actually have you in yeah. tears. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's definitely a good Like Robin Williams. Yeah. Robin Williams did that. Oh, yeah. He was like really, really funny, and then all oh, of a sudden oh. you'd be like, why am I feeling really emotional right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Patrick Adams. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the best Robin Williams you've ever seen? Because I've... I need to watch something. <laughs> The one, scene, I mean, the one scene I love yes, of his is in Goodwill Hunting, when yeah, oh, no, I think that's such a good yeah. Matt Damon tries to test him and he just grabs him by the face and just says like, "I will end you." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I th- I think it's such a. I feel like it's an obvious answer, but but Goodwill Hunting is his best one. Yeah, it, like, it is. I feel I wish I had like some gem diamond in the rough. Oh yeah, you know, Robin Williams film to recommend, but that's if you're gonna about. look for the best of him, it's it's in that movie just throughout. All right, you know what? That's it. I'm watching Birdcage. No one can stop me. <laughs> do, you know, do you know the story about um, the studio that got the Goodwill Hunting script? No. What? Do you mean the Weinstein Company? <laughs> well, it had been passed around. Apparently, it was like they, yeah. everyone knew there was this script that was really good. Yeah, wasn't and... it? Who was it? Matt Damon, didn't he write that? Yeah, it was Matt Damon and Ben Affleck wrote yeah. the wrote the script. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ben Affleck probably helped a bit. Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> sure that, just put us both on there. It's fine. No, it's fine. Um, um, no, I feel like I mean, based on a Ben Affleck's later career as a writer director, yeah, I, I can I could see him writing Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Yeah, he probably did. Maybe. Yeah. He is, yeah. like I said, he is a talented <laughs> he is a talented director. But apparently, yeah. Um, they were asked, um, why was there a fellatio scene between um, <laughs> Matt Damon's character and Robin Williams? And they said, we just put that in there to test uh, when people say they've read the script. We put oh. this like completely left field, like out of you know, out of nowhere sort of gay sex scene <laughs> to see if anyone actually yeah. did read it from to the end. And you're the you're That's the first funny. you're the first producer to actually um, ask you know ask ask yeah. about it. I've never heard wow. of that. That is nuts. I didn't know that's hilarious. <laughs> Why would they risk that? Because you're risking getting it turned yeah. down, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, I can imagine the producer being oh. like, fuck, this is pretty decent. Ah, what the fuck is this? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then just, like, throw, throws it aside, and he's like, Stacy, remind me never to work with some guy named Matt Damon Damon. ever again. Damon. I think it's Damon. <laughs> Damon. <laughs> 
<laughs> Matt Demon. So. And Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> weren't they... They were already getting established, though, as actors, right? Because they were... Weren't they both in Chasing Amy, or... Am I getting that wrong? No, no, no. Uh, ben in... Affleck was in Chasing Amy, but that was after Good Will Hunting. Oh, that was after? <clears throat> yeah. Because they... I remember that's the joke that, that uh, Kevin Smith makes when... Um, like they did, they did J- chasing Amy, and then afterward, Ben Affleck was like, "I want to be in a movie with you again, but I want I need you to write something like Chasing Amy. Like that's what I want to be is I want to be in something like Chasing Amy again." Mm. And he was like, "Motherfucker, one of us has an Oscar for writing, and it's not me. <laughs> so I don't know why you're saying I've got to write something." <laughs> well, because he had fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure working with Kevin Smith is like fun as hell. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it is. Yeah. yeah. Because the dude's so indie at heart, you know. <laughs> he is, yeah. Like, uh, as much as, as much as I, I get the kind of criticism of his like most recent work, um, what, how, like what post has he written Clerks Two. <sighs> well, like he did Jane, Silent Fred. Bob. Um, uh, what's it? Jane, Silent Bob, reboot. There was reboot. another one. Yeah, they did reboot. Yeah. Oh God. Um, I haven't seen it um i kind of i really appreciate what they did is like the marketing to to produce the to get the film out because essentially they couldn't afford to do a mass release because yeah. they just didn't have the, the budget yeah so they just did like a movie tour so oh. they just did like they just went around the country him and like um like the cast and, and like they just did like a Q and A before and after with the film oh a press tour yeah like but it was a press tour but it was the only way you could also see the film because really? it wasn't released in cinemas wide, it was just released with them, like so what they do, on carry the road. The movie with them and take. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, maybe if they if it, they're still just doing it on film and yeah. they're just there with like fucking do they film still, canisters. Do they like, still do whatever. it with the film canisters? Is it probably like, digital? Not. It's probably digital. Yeah, I was gonna say because it's not movies aren't cut on film anymore. No, they're so. not. But uh, yeah. yeah, that would be the because even if you film on film. You then digitize it. Yeah, so that you can edit and then edit. everything. <laughs> yeah. Doing editing and then <laughs> reverting it back to film. <laughs> I don't even know if you could revert it back to film. Or what, how bad it would look if you did that. Yeah, that must be insane. Did you know there's still yeah. mass storage in certain companies that use cassettes? Really? Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Why? Because cassettes are cheaper than like SSDs. Really? Yeah. Huh. But also, if you just need mass storage and not quick fast storage you know what i mean yeah then you can use a cassette versus an ssd because an ssd gives you quick access whereas cassettes don't but they're much cheaper and they can hold like six terabytes for like yeah but bucks. isn't the tape doesn't doesn't tape go bad after a while, like rot only if you uh no no not if it's kept properly mm-hmm. yeah i thought it rotted pretty easily no no you got to keep it proper so if you do then yeah. it doesn't rot but anyway fucking crazy that's really interesting about the clerks movie yeah um but outside of that like yeah he i I just i appreciate like i've i've always enjoyed a movie if the movie is just uh like a bunch of friends dicking around and they made something dude like i i that just makes me appreciate a movie a lot more that's why i love clerks that's why like clerks inspired us to do so much shit yeah clerks that's why that show platoon and power squadron that i talk about all the goddamn time if he's still doing stuff what's going on with it no, they're not. They're not. They did ten episodes and that was it. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just a bunch of friends doing shit. Yeah. Yeah. They had a, I don't know if they're. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing stuff. They kind of all like the show ended at like a perfect time. Like they all kind of moved away, had kids, did this, that, that, yeah. and the other. So the show ended at a perfect time for them to move on with their kind of adult lives. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's move on to <clears throat> closing thoughts about the film slash uh, reviews. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ratings. I mean. Um, I, I would I'd like to hear what you think first, Marcos, just because Tony and I have seen it before, seen it before yeah. and we've kind of discussed our ratings for it. So, right. so Marcos, what did you Yeah. Think. So this movie opens up right. I'm mm-hmm. thinking this movie is gonna be the greatest thing ever because that song <laughs> Dude, how it opens up is so good. It's so promising. I'm it's like so promising. Whoa, dude, this is a fucking awesome song that I've never heard before. It feels completely original. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, damn, dude, this is awesome. Whoever they got for the singer, great voice. You know, yeah, the drum set bothered me, but that's something you can really <laughs> look because the song was so good. And so I'm sitting here like, damn, I'm like getting goosebumps. This is great because you know you get that feeling when you when you like a song that you've never heard before, 
and it's like the first experience ever of it and so yeah. like, i got goosebumps dude i was like this is this is gonna be fucking sick and then you have willem defoe's character walk in with his group just like you were saying tony the silhouettes and everything there's like slight dust in the air it's like thick because of all the people the set the setting everything is perfect i see fucking lord helmet i'm like what the fuck man <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't know you like as much as i'd heard about the movie beforehand i didn't rick moranis was the was the curveball for me i didn't realize he was in it well, we'll and so when he shows up i was like curveball. what <laughs> <laughs> like rick moranis you know when i saw him it's a movie set in the 80s it actually felt really right you know what i mean <laughs> yeah he's in a lot of things <laughs> it made you go ah oh, now we're in the 80s yeah exactly <laughs> And he just feels like that actor. Willem Dafoe, on the yeah. other hand, young Willem Dafoe, like really young, yeah, eighteen year old type of young. I was like, whoa, okay, didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, so they show up, they get there, and the, the scene, the set, everything is set perfectly. So I'm I'm ready for a good time, and um, everything goes off, and you know they get crazy, they kidnap a chick, they put her on the bike, and I'm thinking, how do you get kidnapped on a motorcycle? <laughs> yeah like just she's putting up no fight yeah she's like literally she's just like screaming guy. yeah and like yeah like holding on to him yeah and i'm just like watching like damn that was easy for them yeah <laughs> but yeah it was nuts but it was a great song and it started off you know great solid beginning um and then we get that weird uh typing the letter thing to her brother mm-hmm. um well, actually, hold on. Let me let me back up a little bit. So you get those shots panning down to the to the sister, right? The, the I forget his sister. Yeah. Rape? No, not Raven. It's like, what what is the sister? I honestly name? don't remember the sister's name. I, I just remember it's the name, sister. Though, isn't it? <coughs> Take a look. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, Reva. Reva. Yeah. See. Raven is Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Exactly. So that probably is a poor choice of name, but uh, yeah. <laughs> for the character, like, it's so close to the enemy. Like, why would you do that? But anyway, um. So you look at Reva, right? It's panning down. You think, okay, what is she like? Just like a super fan or something like that? Because she looks kind of starstruck by the singer and everything. And everybody's having a good time. Um, They go in there. They do that. Like, I don't even think Reva's going to be a main character or not. Um, But we do see her. You can tell there's a focus on her. And then then after that, you know, she gets kidnapped. And they go to the... She starts typing up the essay. Hey, I need you. And that's when the brother just comes out of nowhere from wherever the fuck he was. Who knows where the hell he was before? yeah who knows how his sister had his address because <laughs> it sounds like he's just been drifting how did he get it but anyway he you see our character and you know he's he's very attractive dude and uh you know he's got you think so because he really doesn't fucking look attractive no, he's got like with that his like patched mu- fucking he's got it, like it, that... he looks like somebody who's like does can't grow a beard but just forgot to shave today that, like. that is what he looks like he looks a little uh scruff uh disgruntled almost but uh but like like i said he looks like a like a young um uh, if i can i already forget his name uh you know nathan fillion fucking... nathan fillion thank he's you. off his chest yeah, he yeah. looks like a young nathan <laughs> fillion just skinny <clears throat> and uh and so you know he's not he's not an unattractive dude <laughs> Anyway, I like I love that there was just an awkward <laughs> silence. <in that. laughs> but anyway, it's perfect timing. Go on. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> so, so. Attractive guy uh, gets on the train, gets off, goes uh, to the bar. Uh, I think he's probably going to be some nice, respectable dude. Is kind of how I'm, I'm feeling because, like, when his sister cried up, uh, asked, says, "Like, hey, I need your help," he, he shows up very quickly. You know, you could tell he has a good heart. But then he starts acting like a straight up asshole right afterwards, and I was a little caught off guard. Um, I was like, "Oh, okay, this guy isn't—he's uh, more like chaotic good versus, you know, <laughs> you know, like just a uh, lawful good." <laughs> and um, and that's what we got. So we're going into. I find out that the cops. There's only two of them in the entire town for some reason. The set. The entire city is underneath the railroad, the the subway. For some reason, like the entire city, there's not a single part of the city yeah. that's not underneath a train. Um, so I thought that was a little funny. Um, and, and yeah, our character, the the guy who plays uh, Tom Cor- Corey, yeah, Tom Corey, Tom Cody, Cody, Tom Cody. There you go. I just, yeah, I just don't like his character. I mean, he looked like he fit the part quite well, and then he takes his his trench coat off to fight those dudes and. You know, he doesn't look just nearly as buff fucking... as I thought he was going to be. <laughs> yeah. 
His and those fucking suspenders with his high waisted, <laughs> like like silk looking pants, he like they're like shiny. A country bumpkin, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking this guy came from like the countryside because he was a farmer. And then it's just like I don't know. He just looks kind of fucking weird. He doesn't fit anything of how the rest of anybody else looks. Yeah. You know, he looks like he's one of those 1920s boxers, <laughs> and uh, he looks like he's about to put his fists up really weird. But um, and then you get to the fight scene, and then the fight scene between him and, and that that town, or not that town, but the diner, and uh, he picks up the coat rack and hits him, and it just looks mm. funny because you could tell he's hitting them very softly. <laughs> he's like hitting them so softly, and they just collapse, and he throws them out the window. And it's just like uh, from that point on, I was like, oh, okay, so the fight scenes aren't what this movie's about, because that was not yeah. a great fight scene. Um, and, and then we get to more talk about his character. Okay, he was in the army, whatever. He left for a little while. Um, and I'm thinking like, all right, uh, I don't really like his character. Like, I get the story in the background, but I don't like how the actor is playing him. Um, and and the character itself is kind of an asshole. And uh, we don't get to hear much about. Uh, uh, What's the girl's name again? The the girlfriend? Ellen? Ellen? Is it Ellen? Yeah. Ellen Aim? It's yeah. Ellen Aim. Yeah. yeah. So we don't really hear much about Ellen. Not until he rescues her, which is like almost two-thirds of the way into the movie. Um, I really liked... It's not two-thirds. I'd say it's about halfway through. No, it's almost two-thirds, dude. I looked at the time. Really? Yeah. Jesus. There's not much that happens realize. after he rescues her. Because uh, mm -hmm. they get her back, and then you know she's off screen for a little while, and then the fight scene pretty much between him and raven that's like yeah. really all that happened yeah there's not much that happens in this movie no, <laughs> it's no. literally he uh she gets kidnapped he comes to save her yeah. he saves her raven challenges him to a duel yeah. and then they leave that's the end of the movie exactly <laughs> and uh, i liked um oh dude i don't remember the guy's character the, the dude's character's name the uh fucking <laughs> lord helmet i forget his name <laughs> I Bitty don't remember. Fish. I just call him Rick Moranis. Oh, fish! Bitty yeah, he calls fish. him fish. Who just go. mouths off to every single person he interacts with. Yeah, he really does. I like. He, it's just yeah. So I like how the actor is portraying the character. You know, it, it fits for how it was written, but mm -hmm. the character is an asshole. <laughs> yeah, and he's just one of those guys with like a uh, small man syndrome kind of a deal. Except he's got yeah. nothing to back it up. You know. Um, no, he's got money in a suit that's worth more than she makes in a year. Oh, yeah, clearly, clearly, yeah. Jesus Christ. I don't know how this dude makes so much money just touring, like, first time, uh, like, uh, what's it called? Rock stars or whatever. Not even rock stars yet. They're still pretty small time. Um, yeah. But, yeah, apparently he's making a shit ton of money doing this. And uh, Willem Dafoe's character was good. That scene where they're at uh, um, that bar that they're all at. I forget what it's called, but uh, with the girl who's just dancing all weird, I was just like, wow, that feels a little gratuitous, I feel. So that, um, just the, the the stripper at the at the club felt a little gratuitous, because it was a lot of shots on her, like, the director fucking had a crush on her, you could tell. Uh, Apparently it was the girl who does a lot of, um, who, who does a lot of the body work in Flashdance, which came out very oh, wow. similar like, time. Really? Yeah. She's a French ballet dancer, isn't she? Well then. Wee oui, wee. Oui. I mean, she was attractive, but you could tell the dude was like obsessed with her because that's where the camera was like the, almost the entire scene inside that. Well, place. that's the thing is, like I said, this movie's just made by a twelve-year-old. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> oh look, it's a girl and she's dancing. Yeah, like... yeah. Um, and then uh, the McCoy gets into the bar, uh, you know, pretends to like a dude so that she can get upstairs without people questioning, which was smart. I liked how that scene. Yeah, was no, written. it was so clever. Yeah, I liked how that scene was written, and then she knocks his ass out. Which is cool because that was the we the weird part I didn't like about that scene is like she pulls the gun on him and then knocks him out. I was like, but he wasn't looking; just knock him out to begin with. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't mind how she did it. I mean, it fits the style of the movie. You know, it's got to be a little showy, yeah. a you know? little bit dramatic. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be a little bit dramatic. And I like McCoy and what she said. You know, like I thought she was cool. Like, oh, do you mind if I take my coat off first? You know. Yeah. And then that allowed her to slip her hand in there, put it on his face, and knock him out real quick. Cause you know, she's gotta be, uh, she's gotta be tough, and that's that's what she is. Yeah. That's her character, and she did it well, I think. So yeah, she did do well. So it was clever it was how she got up there, and I like how that part was written and everything. She goes over to the, to that uh, high stakes room, and and you know, points the gun at every kills a dude, 
And then like, yeah. <laughs> there's like not many dudes who die in this. That guy dies. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the only one who dies, actually, now that I think about it. I can't remember I mean, anybody else I'm, dies. Yeah. I'm fairly certain somebody dies in that explosion, but, you know. But come on, that's implied. Like, I mean, that, that's not implied. You gotta, you gotta know someone dies. Like, yeah. the shot... That dude's dead. <laughs> yeah. No, I think the scene where they're in the poker room is like the is is probably one of my favorites just because the two people who are on screen are like the best in the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. McCoy yeah, and Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. With his presence just looking at that camera, like yeah. I said, there was a lot of shots of him just silent. He's got this really weird, like he's got like fisherman boots on, dude. Like yeah. the ones that come yeah. all the way up to like the nips. Uh Heather describes this movie as a leather daddy fantasy. <laughs> oh, just in those scenes. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, dude, it was like um, it was really, really interesting that scene. Uh, the only thing I don't understand, my only gripe about that is, for one, yes, his bullets were explosive. Two, um, how did she know when to back out? Like there was no cues or nothing. Yeah, there was no cue to be like, oh, he's definitely saved him. Yeah, now. she wasn't <laughs> looking at a watch or nothing. I but, mean, uh, she was able to keep him up there. So I mean, other than that, that whole scene was actually pretty decent. On the actresses who played McCoy like that whole yeah. I liked her part and it was very good because I yeah. was thinking the whole time how the hell is she going to infiltrate this guy's thing like I was it had me <laughs> contemplating um, it wasn't obvious and, and they definitely didn't discuss a plan um, except for be down here in 15 minutes you know <laughs> it's like okay cool <laughs> I think it, I think oh, it's yeah. best uh, Tony, what were I think it's say? best just not to apply logic you know to this film <laughs> <laughs> you know a more yeah. competent director You're right. might have, uh, you know, given some sort of Cuba, you know. Yeah, yeah, probably. But uh, I definitely liked how she did it. She 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 worked with what she had, man, and yeah. she did it well. I thought she did a great job um, doing that scene. So that was that was entertaining. You know, it had me a little bit on edge, not for our hero, but for McCoy. That was the only time I felt suspense was during that scene because I was like. Are they just going to apprehend her from the start? Is she going to get killed? Is she going to get captured? Is she going to get raped? You know, because I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, they've already shown, yeah. like, these guys are pretty terrible towards women. And she's just walking up in there. And so yeah. I was thinking, like, she also looks like she stands out in that crowd specifically. So I was thinking yeah. someone was going to see her and grab her and whatever. So I actually felt suspense, especially since I knew she was a side character. And very <laughs> You're like, oh no, side characters could yeah, die. Like and yeah, she could definitely die. So I, yeah. that was the only time I felt suspense in the entire film. Um, it's it's a clever plan. It's a, it's really cleverly done. It was it yeah. was cleverly done, and I liked it. So move it's on from that word. scene. They know. you know they still. Marcus, are, are we just doing a recap of the film? Like, what's going on? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm explaining what I felt and what I thought. So, are we going through the whole movie to explain what you felt? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Keep going. Keep going. Kidnap her, take take off. If they get her back, they get the girl back, and they ditch the place, and they take steal some dude's bus and everything. And uh, yeah, those guys, the they're not the silhouettes. They were like the something. I don't know, like the doo-wop group. Yeah, I don't remember it, what their what their name Sorrells. was. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorrells. Yeah. Sorrells. There you yeah. Go. yeah, yeah. So. I thought the, the thought the doo-wop group was kind of random because I was like, is this the 1980s or is it the 50s? <laughs> they just keep they just keep accumulating people. Yeah, like yeah, they keep getting more and more people, and then they they drive to the cops and they it's Cody, the cops and... And then Cody McCoy, and then Cody McCoy and Rick uh, and and Rick Moranis, yeah. then then you add Elaine, then you add the random groupie, then you add the doo-wop group, yeah. like yeah. And then I felt like they were kind of hinting at the cops being a little racist when they told them all to get off. Yeah. What do you mean, a little racist? <laughs> yeah. He called up, them a up. slur. <laughs> oh, he did? I must have missed yeah. that. What did he say? I'm not yeah. going to say it on the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I must have missed that. But the, yeah, they, they were racist. And uh, and then they just blew up all their cars. I was like, what yep. the hell? With a shotgun that he apparently had the whole time. Um, and he blew those cars up so easily, man. <laughs> like, he just... And then just took off, and I was just thinking, like, wow, those cops surrendered quickly and very easily. Yeah, they, they came out of the car with two people with guns, <laughs> yeah. and they're like ten cops with guns, and they're just not like, right, some of us might die, but let's be honest, we've outnumbered them. Yeah, and then they just have to get behind their car for cover. Oh wait, but not with yeah. those rounds. He's got explosive rounds. Right. <laughs> yeah, so they get that, they take off, and um, you know, you move on with the rest of the story. So 
for me, <laughs> for me, the movie started off strong. Middle yeah. was a little weak. Uh, our main actor was weak. I loved the oh, yeah. supporting actors like you know um, Raven and, and McCoy. Those were great characters. As for the girl we were trying to save, I didn't care about her at all. <laughs> like, like at all. Like, yeah, she's a great singer and everything, and she shouldn't have gotten kidnapped. That sucks. But like, I didn't have any emotional attachment to them or their relationship. It was just kind of like, oh, hearsay about their relationship that they're pretty hot and heavy. Uh, mm-hmm. The thing that had it for me was the supporting actors that I liked about the movie the most. Uh, our main characters were not too great, besides Willem Dafoe. Since, and, and uh, yeah, just Willem Dafoe. I think he would count as the other main character, right? Main antagonist. So I thought it was, uh, I thought it was pretty decent. I had fun watching it. I like watching shit blow up, and I like watching the girl dance. She was pretty hot. Um, mm. I liked uh, I liked McCoy a lot though. I liked her a lot. I thought she was cool. Um, then the ending fight scene that was supposed to wrap everything up just felt kind of weird, and the, the townsfolk all coming out of nowhere with all their guns. yeah. It was pretty I thought, weird. So I thought that was cool, but hokey because it's like yeah, yeah, cool. The town's gonna defend themselves now. You know, they won't just be victims anymore. So it gave you a good little wrap up after our main hero leaves. Because yeah, you know, he didn't and it kill kind of Raven. yeah, he didn't kill, and it kind of gives like. I don't know it, it it makes it okay that that uh, Cody came back. Yeah. Because like, otherwise the cops' plan was good. He's like, "Let's get the fuck out of here." Uh-huh. Like, yeah. I'm not. I don't want you to cause more trouble in this town. Yeah. Like, and then and you know it, to even though the cops shouldn't have believed him, but Raven said he's like, "Listen, it's just gonna be me and two of yeah. my guys." Like that's yeah. it. <laughs> Maybe it would have only been the two had it would have just been Tom, but since the cops tried to pull something, he decided to have backup just in case. Yeah, because um, he didn't do that blowhorn until the cop was like, "All right, I'm taking you in." Yeah, that that was a weird shot with the blowhorn like distorting the air. I thought that was weird. I guess that's what happens. I've never used. A I guess. Horn, I don't but, know. Uh, next time I get one, I'll let you know. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I liked the cop character. To be honest, I thought he was a good guy. Um, yeah. He's fucking useless. Like a good guy. Yeah, no, <laughs> he was a bit useless. <laughs> he was useless, but he was a good guy. <laughs> He wasn't an asshole in this city full of assholes. Yeah. The cop was not an asshole, <laughs> which is cool. But uh, yeah, so that, that was all that. They fought, they, they left, and everything was cool. The town can defend themselves. Uh, we got an ending song where the, the doo-wop guys did not sing doo-wop. Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know, he punched his girlfriend out, which is weird, and she didn't have black eyes, yeah. and she said, you have a good And right she was hook. just like, thanks for that. <laughs> Compliment your right hook. Yeah, that shit knocked me out, man. <laughs> so the that was ending, good. Yeah, the ending you was... Train? To me, the ending was a little weird. It was a great song yeah. at the end. She, she did a good Oh, it's another good song. song. Yeah, it's great. So the, the music was good at the end and the beginning. Um, the way that the story wrapped up felt a little weird. But uh, I know the town is going to be safe, so it's not like a sad ending or anything. Like that. Yeah. And then him and McCoy get together and they just go off to do more shit. But um, yeah, to I go have say, more adventures. <laughs> I would say, if uh, if you like Grease, if you if Grease <laughs> is like the best film you've ever seen, you might like this movie. Um, I think it's a weird thing to pull out. I I don't think I. I don't think if people liked Grease, they'd like this. I think honest. they would. It's got that fucking, like, that stupid gang vibe plus fast yeah. cars, and, and it's got good songs. Like, two. Two yeah. good songs. <laughs> <laughs> At least, that's the good thing about this movie, is, like, because I was in the same boat of, like, the beginning has such a great song, mm-hmm. and then the rest of the movie kind of just doesn't have that same kind of tone. So, when the movie ends on that note, it, like, I'm like, oh, at least we at least we ended on the same kind of, like, yeah, super 80s on, like, cool. synth yeah. rock. So I mean, like, I give it like a. If I'm gonna rate it, I give it like a two, like a two, yeah. A two out of ten. A two out of ten, like a, maybe a three. Jeez. Wow. Dude, okay. It's, like, come on. No, no, it's, it's bad. Like, it is bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's definitely yeah. fun. If you were to ask me, what movie do I want to watch, uh, watch that has the same like '80s rock and roll vibe? I could name like mm-hmm. a handful of movies that I'd rather. I'd rather watch yeah. Rocky Horror. You know what I mean? Like, that's a fucking great. Yeah great movie um but yeah so I, i'd much rather watch something like that for this same kind of vibe if you asked me if i wanted to watch something that also had a a cowboy kind of hero saves the day vibe 
then then you'd have me pretty hard pressed to find another movie that that has all these elements <laughs> yeah but then again there's probably a reason why there isn't <laughs> yeah so and tony what would what would you rate the film out of 10 wow um <laughs> i i love this film mm. but yeah. it's still like one out of ten just in like <laughs> in in that the, it's a complete car crash but it's just yeah it's it's completely unaware of how bad it is like the people yeah. making this oh, film yeah. thought they were making like a sort of a musical action love story that was going to be a, a like an instant classic and i admire like the fact that they had the confidence to go to sort of leave it open for additional like they thought they were going to make like a trilogy of films i think yeah yeah <laughs> they thought they were going to make it's a trilogy, amazing yeah. i love you that know... i love that confidence you know yeah so like, to, to add to that real quick um i i love how besides you know our main character it felt like none of the actors you know just called it in you know what i mean they, they didn't just didn't care like they they didn't play like this movie wasn't going to be good you could tell that those other actors gave it their all man yeah like they really put into it and i like that about it i didn't feel like these actors were like yeah i'm just doing it to do it no but most of them really put in for it and it felt good uh, the, the actors gave me something to to watch and play off of it felt great yeah you've just got in like a non-entity of, of a leading man yeah where, like, exactly that's yeah. the only thing that was where, like, difficult some producer was like this guy's gonna be a star he's got he's got the look <laughs> yeah and i want to know what fucking producer thought he was gonna be a star because they should not have a career he's got the looks and he's 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 got the the looks um <laughs> you know has he got anything else nope doesn't need it you know mm-hmm. he's requested yeah, that he has like a bong in his um trailer you know <laughs> <laughs> He Nothing says it's else. for uh, <laughs> medicinal purposes. Um, it, I, it made, what makes me laugh is that they obviously, like whoever wrote this, want to just put a load of things they thought looked cool. So all mm. the, all the sequences don't really blend together, but they're just individually like sequences they think would look cool. Yeah. Uh, so it just goes from one thing to the next. I love the fact that like um, Cody just the the vehicles that he carjacks just gets bigger and bigger as the film goes on yeah. <laughs> he goes from a car to a bus and then attempts a train you know oh yeah, yeah. He tries to car, he tries to car I just love how the fucking the, the train operator is just like <laughs> he like grabs the book from her and like the entire time she's like no we're not going no we're not going and then finally grabs the book and she's just like why didn't she just start with bitch there's a fire on the tracks can you see like the tracks are on fire like I don't know what you expect from me <laughs> Um, oh, dude, what was I gonna say? But um, it's, but so, it's t- char- Tony. So your 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 final score is a one yeah, out of yeah, ten. Yeah, it's like the, it's, it's the characterization. Like they they obviously think that it's cool to sort of like take no shit and be aggressive and you know they they just apply the same characterization for every single character in the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even- yeah. So I remember what I was gonna say now. The character development for you know Tom. The straight up guy who doesn't speak about his emotions finally at the end he says his emotions to uh to, to his girlfriend um yeah a- a- ellen and that was it that, and the foreshadowing was... for that is just mccoy going some people even got emotions even those who don't talk about them like <laughs> okay yeah yeah thanks and, and i was, was aware it. because i'm a human and i have emotions but yeah. thanks yeah and that was it that was that was the end is that yeah, you can be macho, and and then maybe you can say just a little bit, you know, your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that was uh, that. That's all he did at the end. There is he finally communicated up, like to his uh, ex girlfriend appropriately. Yeah, because other than that, he was just like he... a stonewall, being nothing but an asshole because he didn't know how yeah. to communicate his feelings without being macho. I'm punching yeah. her in the face. <laughs> Of her being like, why did you leave randomly? And he, instead of him, like, at the end, he's like, listen, you, I'm going to hold you back in your career. That's for you. I got to do other things. Yeah, like, yeah. I think I think I just, I don't want to hold you back. And he could have just said that. She'd be like, oh, I mean, it hurts that you're leaving. But, like, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. But, like, you know, it, but it took fucking this movie to happen for him to say that. Exactly. So that was the, that was the character development. Other than that, there was, like, nothing else. <laughs> yeah. The town had more nothing. character development. The town did have more character development. <laughs> Yeah, Bill Paxton had more oh, character development. Brilliant character. He's, his hair is like the 
is the like MVP of this film. It really is. <laughs> I don't know. Willem Dafoe's hairstyle is pretty on point. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it, dude. His his hairstyle was good to go. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. I can see the little Danzig devil tongue coming down, man. Yeah, no, it was cool. It looked good, dude. The the costume designer in this was not was not bad. Yeah. As everybody's well, besides the Western dude, it just felt kind of country boy. <laughs> that's that's what makes him feel so fucking out of nowhere, is like everyone else is dressed like a normal human and he's yeah. just dressed like someone I've never fucking seen before in right. my life. It's like they're either 50s or their 80s and then we have this guy <laughs> <laughs> who's neither yeah he's he really is neither because like his again his, his like trousers look like silk they, they're shiny yeah so if you want him to look like rough like why aren't they jeans why aren't they like even corduroy like but no they're like they're, they, they look really shiny silk like he's got like really comfortable pantaloons on yeah like it's <laughs> <clears throat> they're not even like wool you know what i mean like what they would yeah. probably typically be made out of yeah it's yeah. weird it's a weird outfit it's yeah. a weird little get up so so yeah there's that guy and uh but yeah. yeah so reese i think we're moving on to you now um i give it probably the highest i guess out of all of us i'd give it a four and a ten. Oh, you give it a four why what's your reason? yeah i i really i get i get what you guys are saying and i think probably i'm being a little bit too subjective um, but I just really enjoy it. Like, it's a movie that I've, this is the second time I've watched it in, in at least, I think it was, it's only within six months that I've re- rewatched it now. Okay, so, um, so hold on. Is this rating like our joy rating or is this? Like, no, it's not a, like no, a it's a not film. a joy rating. Because <laughs> okay. if, it, if it was a joy rating, this would be a 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Okay. That's mean. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I love this film, but it's a fucking yeah. car crash. <laughs> no, it, it's, it is a car crash, but I think, I think there's a lot of stuff that, go well for it like in terms of the actors and stuff like that that i i put into that score a little bit okay of like yeah, willem defoe's doing a good job i really enjoy rick moranis even though he's got difficult dialogue to hurt like hurdle through <laughs> yeah, he does. like yeah. he's he's doing a really good job of selling it like as his like this is just how the character is like that's what he's selling like not that he's delivering the dialogue wrong but like no this is how the character is um as opposed to some characters like who who maybe wouldn't deliver it that way it's just full of people who are doing their best and doing the best they can with the shit script written by a 12 year old yeah no they really are doing their best i gotta say the well i did say it already you know they they really gave it their all you know what i mean those actors who were who were doing a great job they really gave it their all and i can appreciate that that's why i didn't give it a one (laughs) i almost gave it a three it was more like a two and a half to almost three uh, just because of the actors that I liked, they did a really good job. Yeah. yeah. What was the... I can't even think of the last movie I gave a one. Oh, I don't think I ever gave a movie a one. I, wait, I've definitely wait, given I a think you gave... Um, was it Better Watch Out? It was either Better Watch Out... No, I think it was Better Watch Out, yeah. Let me take a look. Let me look at, let me look at what movies I've rated. <laughs> and... Oh, it was Better Watch Out. Yeah, it was, right? Yeah. I yeah so. so the only things i've rated a one out of ten um are uh some really shit movie called we must remain the wild-hearted outsiders oh which God, if that title, title doesn't tell already, you yeah. that it's wow. a movie that you should hate that's what i was gonna say um, title, dude. better watch out which we watched mm. uh the assistant thanks tony <laughs> oh <laughs> that was a movie we watched with, for our film group Have you and you now accountant own? Huh? Have you seen the that I now own? Yeah, speaking it keeps coming up Affleck. all the time. Yeah, speaking of Ben, hold on. So on my Amazon account, every time I finish a movie, because it's the only Amazon movie that I like, movie that I own on Amazon, it's like next up, <laughs> the assistant. <laughs> the assistant. And I'm like, fuck no. Um, some movie called Orgy of the Dead. I rated what? a one out of ten. Hello. Um, that was crap. <laughs> <laughs> a movie called Vampire Academy. I rated one out of ten. Um, I remember that movie frustrated me a lot. Uh, the 1983 remake of the night of uh, of Breathless, the Jean Luc Godard film, but it's a an American remake with fucking uh, what's his name, uh, Richard Gere, and oh. it's 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 ob- absolutely terrible. Dude, I hate. And of course, remakes. Star Wars: Rise of 
or uh, Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker. Of course, of course. I rated it a 1 in 10 because it was an assault on my life. <laughs> you know, the only American remake I think I don't have a beef with is, I mean, it's not as good as the original, but uh, all I can think of is this, the, the other name. Let the Right One In. Uh, oh, yeah, I think the American version is called Let yeah. Me In. Yeah, it's Let Me In. That, yeah. That's the only I can't one think I of don't what... have beef with. But it's not as good as the original, but uh, it's not mm-hmm. terrible either. The only English remake that I like, which I guess it's, I get now it's got some american i don't know who produced it but the only remake that i like um is uh funny games funny games us oh really i don't think i've seen that yeah Not a fun it. but that's it's made by the same director oh so there you go yeah so it didn't lose too much of its <laughs> and it's idea. shot for shot and the exact same dialogue <laughs> you want to know the worst one i think i've seen what old boy the american oh, oh yeah no that's that definitely jesus Christ. no i'll be honest the worst is breathless for me Worse is breathless. You're not a fan of yeah. um, the, if... the Departed. Is the Departed a remake? Is it of what? Infernal Affairs. Don't. Oh. Wait, what? Infernal Affairs. Infernal Affairs. Yeah. Let's watch both. That is is that a <laughs> Italian? Film? No, it's um. I, I, I think it's a Korean film. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, dude, I gotta Weird. watch that now because I really. Love I never it. knew that. I didn't. I didn't realize part of it was a remake at all. I really love like those really good classic Japanese or Korean films. Yeah, like 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 I said, Old Boy is just so good in my opinion. Old Boy, is super good. I it's just a great show, film, like and a nine, yeah, the... close to ten actually because that is so good. <laughs> yeah, <It's> so sad. <laughs> I haven't seen it in such a long time, but that's just because not really in the mindset to feel really fucked up and sad. Oh, dude, it's so messed up, dude. <laughs> it's so messed up. It's so sad. No, but, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a look. Chinese film. I'm now a uh, racist. <laughs> good job. Well done. <laughs> God damn it, Tony. We can't have that in our podcast. We're going to have to cancel you. <laughs> I'll have to edit that out of time. <laughs> Just edit We Tony definitely don't say it. anything as bad as that. Just edit Tony entirely out of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Cancel dude, if we want our podcast that. to be listened to in China, <laughs> you know how they are. Their censorships over there are crazy. Did you know that Steam recently launched in China with only twenty titles on the store? Oh my god! Because the rest of the library needs to be vetted by the Chinese government. That's nuts. Yes, Imagine that being somebody's job. Somebody's job is to play through an entire game. And make sure that it's okay for the Chinese people to see this. That's insane. It's so crazy over there, man. <laughs> Imagine how far into God of War would they get before they'd go? Uh, maybe, maybe this isn't for China. <laughs> probably the let's see, the God of War one. Probably the second. There's the sex mini game. They're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can deal with killing hydras, but like, no sex mini game. Nope. Sorry, can't do it. <laughs> oh, do you remember that um, sequence in um, was it Call of Duty? The airport sequence, dude. That se- that sequence is banned in a lot of countries. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Uh, because you kill a bunch of innocent people in an airport as a terrorist. Yeah. Okay. As well, an undercover terrorist, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. It's people call it one of the most like disturbing scenes in a video game, which I don't think so, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> one of the most disturbing scenes in a video game while I'm just playing God of War, where I'm like, I literally, I, I, I gutted Kronos, dude, you, as his yeah. massive guts flew out of his stomach. You um, rip Apollo, and also I, off. yeah, I ripped Apollo. I, no, it's Helios. Helios, I Jeez, rip, yeah. ripped Helios's head off. Um, I, t- I, I cut off Hermes's legs oh, just so for his brutal. boots. It's so brutal. just for his boots. Just that. wanted his shoes. <laughs> yeah. Then you. uh What's the other one? That's pretty weird. Oh yeah. You well, the game fucking Hercules starts with you. Face into a pulp. Yeah, that one. That was the point where Heather was like, "What the fuck <laughs> is going on?" Right now? It's so good though. Yeah, I mean, the, I I told Heather like the end of the game is you can you decide when to stop like pushing Zeus's eyes in. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was that was a pretty crazy scene watching that from yeah. like Zeus's perspective. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. It's really good, and like with uh, Poseidon, the same is like you can sm- when you're smashing his face against the wall. I love you can just keep doing it. I love that they make you press in the joysticks. Yeah, <laughs> can I just say that's no. so cool? It's 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 so fucked up. It's such a like, it's such a brutally vicious video game for no reason other than how vicious can we be? Yeah, and and the way that they 
the way that they make the player actually like you're almost making the player gouge his eyes out by doing that too with the yeah. and, like you're doing it you're fucking doing it man it's crazy <laughs> it's a weird game it's awesome it's a great game and the new one the new god of wars oh so good i haven't played it I dude played it. i've heard it's really good and i know this i know the spoiler so oh it's so fucking good and so but the spoiler is, just makes me go like, well, now I'm confused as to how the other game works. The other so. one that's really good, Reese, is is a Cinema Song or S- Cinema Song Hellblade. Hellblade. Cinema Song Hellblade. No, okay, Cinema. Um, Cinema Song. Hellblade is insane. It's all like, uh, you know, follows a lot of mythology um, and whatever, yeah. but it's it's just really good it was helped it was developed with like some psychiatric therapists and everything and uh your character experience oh i know about this one the girl she's like schizophrenic yeah she's schizophrenic yeah so and if you play it with headphones on you hear the voices like in the back of your ear but what's crazy is that when because you can't see behind you and you will hear the voices whisper behind you and then that's when you dodge and then you dodge a, a an attack from an enemy it's so <laughs> fucking cool, dude. You gotta play it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, really good game. But anyhow, I think we should probably call the podcast here. Yeah, I think we should wrap it up. Um, uh, what are we? Who's suggesting the next uh, video? So the next one is a suggestion from Dave because he's going to be on the podcast oh, next right. week, right. and it's Inherent Vice, the Paul Thomas Anderson film. All right, so interesting. Great. Yeah, have you seen it, Tony? Uh, I think I've only seen like the first half hour of it. Don't okay. let that be a yeah. you know. And a, a judge of like whether it's worth watching or not. I just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the suggestion Dave made because uh, he was on the podcast uh, for a very early episode, and then he found out that the first episode we did was Phantom Thread, and he was like, "Why didn't you guys do Inherent Vice? I love that film. Like, it's the same director." And I was like, "Oh, we'll come back and do that." So I'm looking I've, forward uh, to that. Got to yeah. come back and do that. Yeah, because like I really so like we'll do that. How, uh, um, fucking Phantom Thread was shot. It was a beautiful film. Yeah. yeah, he j- he does shoot just very very beautiful films. Paul Thomas Anderson does. Yeah, yeah. So I'm but uh, I I'm interested to hear it because I I remember when it came out, I heard Inherent Vice was kind of slated by a lot of people for, okay. that I knew. Um, so to hear that Dave loves it so much, thinks it's like one of his best hmm. films. I'm just curious to to watch it, see what I think, and then hear what David says to to kind of back it up. Yeah. All right. Um, is that is that, is there any any last things people want to say? Um, future Tony, um, if you listen to this on the way home, uh, maybe stop in for milk. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. We'll leave it there. All right. All right. <laughs> Speak to everybody next week. Bye.